anticipated on-screen reunion of detectives Lee and Carter. Well, thanks for joining us for Good Day Atlanta. Stay connected to Fox 5 around the clock. Like our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fox 5 Atlanta and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Fox's World Cup coverage is next, but you can still tune into Good Day Atlanta. You can find our next two hours streaming online. Just go to the live page of our website, fox5atlanta.com. You can also find us on Tubi. Look for Fox 5 Atlanta in the live TV section and stream Good Day Atlanta on the Fox 5 Atlanta YouTube channel. So we'll see you soon. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. Good morning from Fox 5 News. This is Good Day Atlanta at 9 a.m. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Good Day Atlanta at 9. We are so glad you're joining us for this online edition of Good Day Atlanta on this Friday morning. Well, delivery notice scams are heating up as we get closer to the holidays. Fox 5 iTeam's Dana Fowl says it's hard to tell if it's real or not sometimes, but she's got some help. She'll join us in just a few minutes with the warning signs to be on the lookout for. And when she finds that her luck is running out and her gambling addiction is only getting worse, Dolores finds herself back in her home country of Jamaica only to face her estranged family. Ahead of the next half hour, actress Sharman Lee will join us in studio to talk about her new holiday movie, Black Jack Christmas. But first, we begin with breaking news just hours ago. The man wanted for stealing an SUV with an elderly woman inside has been taken into custody. The suspect was arrested in DeKalb County overnight. So let's send things over to Good Day's Mark Teichner, who is live in Clayton County for us with the very latest. Mark?
Hey, we are uh, sitting here waiting to get a uh, briefing from police. At this point, we haven't been told uh, any information about the arrests that were made as far as the, the location within DeKalb County, the name of the suspect, and or what charges he might face. But we do know uh, that there is one very relieved family out there. I'm just relieved that she's all right now. Philip McCurry picks up his mom, putting an end to an hours-long ordeal. Got my mama back. I thought I lost her. It all started Thursday afternoon in Jonesboro. Shirley McCurry sat in the passenger seat of this SUV while her nurse went into a convenience store on North Main Street. Locked the car, but my mom must have unlocked the car. Surveillance video shows a man dressed in light-colored clothing who appears to be talking on his cell phone. He checks out the SUV, walks over as the passenger window rolls down. The man gestures toward Shirley, gets behind the wheel, and drives away. The guy carjacked the car with my mom in it. Hours went by with no sign of either Shirley or the SUV. Tara, I mean, it's the, the worst. The worst thing that could happen to a son. Police say the kidnapper drove all the way to Baston Restaurant on Howell Mill Road in West Midtown. He handed her $10 and then he was like, I'm just going to park around the corner. The carjacker took off. Shirley sat in the restaurant for hours until a host called her family on her cell phone. Why would do something like this to, to, you know, a sweet lady like my mom, you know, thank God he didn't hurt her. Obviously, everyone thinks that's the case, that it is good he didn't hurt her. Now, uh, we are still waiting for police to give us some kind of update on these arrests, and if we do get that information, we'll bring it to you right away. Reporting live from Clayton County, I'm Mark Teichner for Good Day Atlanta. Yeah, certainly glad that she's okay. Some good news there. All right, Mark, thank you. Let's take it now with Good Day's Buck Lanford. He's got more of the morning's top stories for us, Buck. At least, thank you. We have new surveillance images of the suspects wanted in connection to a shooting near a Buckhead hookah bar. Take a look at your screen. The shooting happened Wednesday outside the lounge on Bennett Street. One person was hurt in the shooting. Still no word yet on what sparked the gunfire. One of the two victims gunned down in the shooting near Atlantic Station will be laid to rest tomorrow. 12 year old Zion Charles died from his injuries after a shootout on the 17th Street Bridge nearly two weeks ago. 15 year old Cameron Jackson was also killed in the incident. Charles' loved ones were, will hold a funeral tomorrow afternoon at the First Iconium Baptist Church on Moreland Avenue. That's in Southeast Atlanta. In their efforts to address youth violence, members of Atlanta's Public Safety Commission say they want to hear from you. They will hold a community meeting for residents to suggest strategies. It's set for 6.30 on Tuesday night at Atlanta City Hall. Well, the tragic shooting has forced Atlanta police officers to set up cameras at Atlantic Station in real time. They have been granted access to the development's private security cameras. Atlantic Station had the choice to allow this because it is a private development. APD hopes to work with Atlantic Station's private security in the future to prevent another tragedy like the 17th Street shooting. We knew this morning we're getting new images of WNBA star Brittany Griner as she returned to U.S. soil just hours ago. She arrived in San Antonio, Texas after her release from a Russian prison where she was held for nine months after her arrest for having cannabis oil in her luggage. While Griner's release is being celebrated, the Biden administration, though, is facing some tough questions about the terms of the deal. The White House failed to win the release of other Americans like Paul Whelan, who have been in prison for years and none of whom generated the same level of attention is Griner, but the Biden administration says their options were limited. Our choices was uh, Brittany or no one at all. Bringing home one American or no American at all. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. The prisoner swap solidified the release of one of the world's most notorious arms dealers, Victor Bout. A Fox 5 News alert now on overcrowding at metro area animal shelters. The problem is so big they're putting out an urgent call for adoptions while making the process easier and more affordable. Good Day's Lindsay Tooman gives us a look at what can be done about this. Local animal organizations I spoke to say they've seen this kind of situation before where they're really filled to the brim with animals, but it's never gone on for this long. And that's really what's creating this tipping point. 
Animal shelters all across Metro Atlanta have been seeing a concerning trend. More animals coming in, fewer being adopted out. We've been over capacity all year long. Um, we're also seeing an alarming increase in the number of animals that are abandoned at our gates as well. Joe Labriola is the executive director at Paws Atlanta. He says when the shelters are over capacity, it also impacts local rescue operations. For example, when people abandon animals here at the rescue, they could previously call the county for help, but DeKalb and Fulton counties are both out of housing space. It is creating an enormous strain on our resources here, whether it's staff, whether it's our facility or our financial resources, because these animals were not part of our operating budget and plan. DeKalb County ran out of housing space back in August. Fulton County ran out of room in October. Cobb County says it's at high capacity, but still taking strays, and so is Gwinnett County. Jessica Kruger with Best Friends Animal Society says rescue groups have no space either. They're also seeing adoptions decrease, but then they're also, they rely heavily on transfers out. And so then when we're also seeing the adoptions decrease, we can't take as many animals from them. Kruger says the community can help by adopting, fostering, volunteering, or donating, even sharing posts on social media. You can and can make a difference and, you know, really go in and help shelter workers and the animals in the shelter. These local rescues tell me they're not exactly sure why they're seeing this kind of demand and for such a long period of time. It's probably a mix of factors, one being tough financial times for so many people. But they also say anything can help from adopting to fostering to donating your time or your resources that can help these shelters and these rescues. That's the latest from DeKalb County. I'm Lindsay Tooman for Good Day Atlanta. A new dog could be a perfect Christmas gift for someone, right? Oh, yeah. That's a look at your headlines for now. Be back in about 30. All right. Thanks, bud. Fox 5 Storm Team meteorologist Ryan Beasley joins us now with the forecast. And some better news, Ryan, and the fact that the fog isn't quite as intense. You know, I love all the half glass, <laughs> uh, glass half full kind of conversations right. today. That's like your nickname, right? But, but yeah. I tell you what. This afternoon, when it's pouring rain on you while you're oh, running errands, that. getting your nails done, getting Picking all up the pretty kids for, from school, it always up, comes right get, during carpool. Oh my gosh! Yeah, is this your first year in carpool? Uh, no, it's not my first year, but it's, I feel like it's been the worst year. <laughs> my goodness, <laughs> carpool is a whole life-changing yeah, experience for me. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You nailed it. That's a good uh, reference. I like mm -hmm. that, Elise. Carpool today. Yeah, get ready for that. Kids coming home from school, I, I think it's going to be um, a lot of rain for us, especially for the elementary and younger kids. Once you get to high school, middle school, we'll be talking about uh, improving conditions with this rain moving out. But a pretty stout line of uh, showers, and it's continuing to blossom. Got to give all the credit to our models this morning. They have done a fantastic job job with timing intensity and just really nailing it down for you so i hope that you've uh watched us all morning long and seen how accurate our models have been today it's very rare especially in this setup like we have right now that the models are doing exceptional uh so got to give credit when credit is due notice that visibility is uh still patchy to dense fog out there but in atlanta not as bad as the past few days and i've even gotten some pictures this morning of a little bit of sunshine mixed in with the clouds 64 in Atlanta we will see our temperatures rise between now and midday but if that uh, heavier rain arrives a little bit earlier once <laughs> once a heavy rain <laughs> arrives our heating is going to come to a halt so don't expect a lot of heating the second half of your afternoon. Temperatures plateau. They stay there. And look at all that rain uh, during uh, the carpool this afternoon, especially north of I-20. But I'm not saying that uh, I'm ruling out 100% uh, rain-free conditions south of I-20. Overnight tonight, temperatures will tumble into the 50s, ushering in more seasonable air. Rainfall totals today could be up to a half inch. Rainfall totals through the weekend, uh, over an inch of rain. And then there's your big impact storm system Wednesday into Thursday where we could get one to four inches of total uh, rainfall and your Fox 5 storm team forecast series of cold fronts will be the story now Saturday is going to be the better of the two days this weekend but on Sunday afternoon
afternoon when we're talking about drying conditions before a pleasant winter-like day on Monday. Elise? Whoa, back to winter, huh? Yes. <laughs> we haven't been there lately. Well, nope. mm -mm. all right, Ryan, thank you. It's 910 coming up on Good Day, Atlanta. Don't fall for the delivery scams this holiday season. Fox 5 iTunes Dana Fowl has tips on what to do to avoid falling victim to scammers. I had a delivery scam offer just yesterday, rather, and I asked my husband to check and see if he had any. He had three yesterday, so you might fall for it. It's easy to do because we have so many deliveries expected over the next few weeks, so let's fight back next. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. The Morning Brief gives you all the top stories to start your day. And the GDA Download delivers a daily recap of trending news, celeb interviews, recipes, and more. Those gifts from the front door, but Fox 5 I team's Dana Fowl says those packages lead to yet another type of theft. Oh, goody. Yeah, yeah. they're just coming at us <laughs> from all directions, and not, but I'm here to tell you, you know, where they are. Yeah. Okay, there are some thieves who use the simple knowledge that we're all about to get overwhelmed with packages to create some confusion and I know it almost caught me it was just yesterday no matter who we ordered from most of us track the package through an app email maybe a text so it's not unusual to get a notice in those places to let you know it's coming or maybe it'll be late Scammers are sending emails and texts, too, about packages that might need just a little bit more information in order to finish up that delivery. Uh, here's some I got, and here's another, and my husband got one that said he would have his package suspended unless he paid some overdue fee. All of those are fake. But how can you tell? Well, the FCC and the BBB remind us that the scam often asks for you to click on a tracking link or they leave a voicemail, want you to call back. You could even get a missed delivery tag on your door. Well, how about this? Never click that link. Never call back that number. 
When you do, it may automatically download malware. It may ask you to cough up personal information to proceed. If it's a call, you may be asked by a very nice person for the same information. So instead, if you think your package may be delayed, call the retailer directly. Do not use a number emailed for texting. Find that number independently. But you understand though how people could fall for this. It's like you're rushed. You're, you're just trying to make sure you get these these holiday gifts. It can be really easy to fall for this. Yeah, it, it is, and we see it often. Yeah. Just pause before answering anything like that. Give your brain a second to process it. I am getting so many packages right now. And, I, and yesterday <laughs> they were coming in, and I thought I don't even remember what they are. Oh geez. Even when they were in the boxes on the dining room table, I'm like unless I open these, I don't remember what they are. Right. So they're counting on this confusion. Okay. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah, but now we do too. Yeah. So we know what to yeah. do, what to be on the lookout Scamming for. is a business. They do oh. it because it works. Man, see, that's even better. That's why we have you, to uh, make sure we, <laughs> scam <laughs> we alert. know what's going on. Scam alert. <laughs> Data, thanks so much. Uh -huh. Have a good weekend. Well, Fox 5 Storm Team meteorologist Ryan Beasley is back once again with the, there he is. I was going to say, I don't see him over there. You're hiding behind a camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I'm you're sneaky, here. sneaky. He's sneaky. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, Elise. Uh, but uh, as you walk outside the door at this hour, temperatures will greet you in the 50s and 60s. And kind of what you see is what you get for today in the temperature department. We're not anticipating temperatures to rise uh, a significant difference from where we're sitting at, at this hour. But what will change is increasing steady rain. That's going to be the big storyline throughout your day today. Already seeing that move through Par Polk County and Napoleon County, Dallas pinpointed that in the last hour talking about the rain moving in your direction. Cobb County, you're up next on the north side of town, coming out of uh, Somerville area and try on headed into Calhoun. So heads up Jasper and uh, Canton, you'll see some rain showers here in the near future. But what just uh, what we're seeing back to the west, there's more that's going to continue to drift in our direction. So we're not done quite yet with this rain. It's going to continue into the afternoon. If not, uh, the coverage is going to expand. The intensity is going to uh, grow, and, and that will linger through the early afternoon. For your evening plans tonight, I anticipate the rain to slowly drift out of our viewing area. Clouds remain thick. Might get a little bit of patchy fog, but nothing over the top. And then heading into your uh, Saturday, I anticipate the cloud cover to win out. Sunday morning, though, the rain chances will return. Download the Fox 5 Storm Team app, great tool to have. You get more impactful rain as the day moves along. Tonight, slightly cooler than the past few days, but still over 10 degrees above our average low for this time of year. Fox 5 Storm Team forecast take a step down in temperature this weekend. Again, pinpointing Saturday is the better of the two days this weekend for outdoor activities. Pick of the week is going to be Monday, 64, cooler and sunny. And then watch out for moderate to heavy rain, possibly even some thunderstorms Wednesday into Thursday. Elise. All right, Ryan, thank you. It's 918 coming up on Good Day Letta. The Nutcracker is back in the production. We'll have a couple of familiar faces this year. Good Day's Paul Milliken is in Roswell ahead of opening night. You ready for this, Paul? Yes, I am so ready. I cannot wait to get on stage. First, though, we got to show you some real dancers, of course. Look at this warm up right now for a live performance of The Nutcracker presented by Atlanta Dance Theater and the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. We've got more coming up after the break. Stay tuned. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now.
Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. The Morning Brief gives you all the top stories to start your day. And the GDA Download delivers a daily recap of trending news, celeb interviews, recipes, and more. Are few holiday traditions as magical as seeing a production of The Nutcracker? And Atlanta Dance Theater will once again stage the ballet classic this weekend at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. Good Day Atlanta's Paul Milliken is live there this morning. Good morning to you, Paul. Paul, it's opening night. You yes. have a role in this. It is. Are you ready? Roll out the red carpet, people. <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. We are ready to walk into the theater like the stars that we are. Yes, it is opening night. So excited to be back at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center for The Nutcracker, presented by Atlanta Dance Theater. As you know, we, we did this last year, and Joanne and I have a little part in it. We're doing it again this year. But I'll tell you, the talent on this stage is staggering. This is a full, beautiful production. It is perfect for the whole family, and you'll get a preview in a minute. First, though, hanging out with David Crow from Roswell. Well, cultural arts this year you've partnered with atlanta dance theater for this really exciting yes yes um roswell cultural arts center we present artists from all over the yeah. world um, as far away as nova scotia and south america wow. but we do recognize the investment that local arts groups like atlanta dance theater have made for the community and we want to invest in them as well and that's why we partner with them i love that and really quickly i'll say this is a beautiful venue too you must be really proud of what you have yes she's old but we keep her up you do absolutely you know i feel like you're you're talking about me. Look, I'm old and I'm somehow being propped up on stage again. David, great to see you. you. And we have a special guest in the house. Now, here's the thing, Elise. You don't often see Joanne Feldman when she's not at work. But when she's not at work, she's got a crown on her head because, darn it, she deserves it. Hi, Joanne. And sexy ringlets, too. I'm loving the look. And by the way, in the Nutcracker, this is my wife right here. This is my wife. And we are the Lord and Lady of the Manor. How are you feeling about opening night, Miss Joanne? I think I'm more nervous than the dancers are. How are you feeling? I feel exactly. Exactly the same way. They're up there warming up, having a great time, and we're like, wait, what was that one step that, that we got That we do? did last year and we should know by now? You know, we probably should have rehearsed, like, the whole year to keep it up, right? You didn't? Oh, ne never mind. Okay, forget that I said that. Okay, so we're about to see a very special dancer perform. Your little girl, Karis, is standing by, ready to go. How do you feel, Mom, watching your daughter perform every year? You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, my God, I love this, though. You, I mean, this is a big part of your lives. Yeah, I really am going to cry. Why'd you do this to me, Paul? Because, Joanne, this is what we wanted, that Oprah moment. She, right. <laughs> the Oprah moment. Yeah. yeah, she's been dancing with them since she was three years old. Mm. And this is her last nutcracker. Oh. And I'm so proud of her and all of these dancers. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what you did. But, but getting to <laughs> share the stage with her, too. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. is so much fun. And to have... It's me and my husband, and have you up there, too. Yeah. All of the, the dancers adore you. It is, it is such a fun experience, and, you know, watching these girls grow up yeah. and all the skills that they've learned. I mean, not just dance skills, but the discipline mm. and all of these skills that they're going to take with them throughout life, whether or not they ever dance again. Yeah. It's just, it's phenomenal. Okay, Mom, get your camera ready. It's time for a dance performance, all right? So here is your first look at the Nutcracker opening tonight at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. Take it away. Okay.
Elise, how beautiful is this Gosh, really? And stunning. it's a full evening of this. Stunning. Joanne has got tears running down oh. her face right now watching what? her daughter do this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can it is only really imagine. special to be part of this. Yeah. yeah. And she's not even our daughter, right? And like, we feel so proud because <laughs> we know how, how much time. Well, yeah, we've watched her growing up too. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Yeah, we've watched job. her growing up too. Yes. Oh, I love it. Absolutely beautiful job. Well done, Karis. And I uh, loved hearing Joanne get to talk about her daughter too. But the Nutcracker opens tonight and runs through Sunday at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. Showtimes 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow and 2 p.m. tomorrow and Sunday. And for more information on the show, you can follow the links at fox5atlanta.com. Just look for the story under the Good Day section. It's 927 coming up on Good Day Atlanta when her gambling addiction gets out of control. Dolores goes back to Jamaica to rebuild her relationship with her family. But she soon realizes that all bets are off. Actress Sharman Lee is here to talk about her new BET Plus holiday movie, Black Jack Christmas. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Welcome back to Good Day Atlanta. I hope you're having a great start to your Friday. The uh, fog is not nearly as thick as what it's been the past few days, but that's not necessarily the big story I want to get across to you. I want you to get prepared for the rain that is quickly moving into North Georgia, especially along the Georgia-Alabama state line. you got some moderate showers, temperatures, though, in the 60s. I mean, you can't complain about how it feels outside, though. Well, um, I'm here for that, but it definitely has a lot of moisture and high dew points that are present allowing for that shower activity to continue to move in our direction. You do have some reduced visibility, but again, a lot of that is few and far between compared to the last few days where it was just a blanket of fog all across North Georgia. This model does a great job of pinpointing that more moderate rain rolling in this afternoon, continuing through the late afternoon. By the evening hours, I anticipate the heaviest rain to move down towards our southeastern counties and cities. Behind that, we'll have a little bit of 
light to moderate showers or lingering nuisance showers, however you want to phrase it. But the bottom line is don't anticipate a dry afternoon or a dry evening. Whether it's uh, if, even if it's not raining outside your house, most likely you will have a wet ground to deal with. So the hour by hour forecast today, not a lot of change in temperature and not a lot of change in cloud cover, but the rain will be on and off. Saturday is going to be your better of the two days this weekend. Mostly cloudy skies, and here you go with that. The rain arriving overnight Saturday into Sunday morning and then exiting Sunday evening before we get a dry day on Monday and Tuesday. And then this high impact storm system that we'll be tracking Wednesday into Thursday morning could even get some thunderstorms out of that as well. Rainfall totals between now and uh, Thursday primarily will be up to four inches of rain. So in your Fox 5 Storm Team forecast, there you go, 68 today, about 10 degrees cooler than yesterday, and then you get more showers Saturday night into Sunday. Elise? Mm, that's a rainy looking forecast there, but I see some sunshine peeking through on some days. All right, Ryan, thank you. If you're like me, you love a good holiday movie, and there's another one to add to your list. It's called Black Jack Christmas on BET Plus, and it stars Charmin Lee. Take a look. So, guess tonight wasn't my night after all. But you know what? I will be back. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Johnson. I understand everyone grieves differently. Why don't you get to the point, Ms. Patel? Two of your credit cards are maxed out, and the other flag for suspicious activity. Oh. Are you a compulsive gambler? Since Frank died, you have changed. We, we haven't talked in a while. Years. Yeah. I'm coming to Jamaica. Where you staying? With you, of course. Oh, Charvin Lee joins us now with more on Black Jack Christmas, and it's so good you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Hey. I'm so glad to be here. Yes. Okay, so one of the first things I'm noticing from that, you know how some movies are like holly jolly, jingle belly, and then that kind of thing? <laughs> this is not that holiday movie. No, no, yeah. it's absolutely not. It's actually... Did you, did you know that Die Hard was a Christmas movie? They say. They yes. say, exactly. Yes, they say. It's that. It's I just gotcha. a really good movie that happens to take place around Christmas. Perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Perfect. So, I mean, it's dealing with something serious, right? Like, your character has a gambling addiction. She has a serious gambling addiction. Um, she is an immigrant mm -hmm. from Jamaica, mm -hmm. and there's a different kind of love, you know, when you marry somebody and they become your partner and your family, mm -hmm. right? So she lost her husband and gambling was their fun thing before. I gotcha. But then it became her destructive thing, okay. if you will. Um, and addiction overall just requires so much compassion and they call it a, dis a disease because mm -hmm. it is a dis-ease and she definitely who's dealing with a lot of dis-ease. For sure, <laughs> you know? yeah. And yeah. I mean, it seems like it even, even in the clip, it, it kind of catches Dolores off guard, right? Like how deep that she gets into it and, and just the issues <laughs> that, that stem from this. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it, to be honest, what family doesn't or hasn't dealt with addiction? All families. I, right, yeah. personally, mm -hmm. two of my brothers mm -hmm. have been taken as a result. So finding that, uh, the truth in that, mm -hmm. wasn't very hard. You I'm know, sure, yeah. and then at the same time, it also reminds you or reminded me to be grateful for the siblings that I still have left, which is why Don and I, Don Lewis, was amazing to work with. Yeah. And our sisterhood began immediately. Like mm -hmm. on day one, I told her, I was like, you're going to like me. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to like me a lot. We going to be so And we did. It. And just, you know, I we just that. immediately connected. You clicked. Yeah. You connected. So yeah. this this is the, a, a, a movie and a filming that took you to Jamaica. Yes. Yes. We part of it from, filmed there. Yes. Half in LA and half in Jamaica, mm -hmm. which you know what? I want to say, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, but COVID had us on lock. Oh, so we yeah. couldn't go to the beach and enjoy Jamaica except for when we were shooting. That's which just was, wrong. I know. Oh, I really wrong. wanted to tell you a different story yeah. about it. But it just no. means you got to go back then, right? Absolutely. You got to go back now that you Never too yeah, much Jamaica. That you can do that. For sure. Right. For sure. So, I mean, how was that, you know, having that, that cultural aspect, that Jamaican aspect? That was awesome because we actually got to work with some of the top actors in Jamaica like we use mm -hmm. Jamaican actors and crew. musicians right yes and crew. And crew. Yeah. yeah and so just the you know the merger of that and and they were so welcoming and happy to have us and it just felt like we were at home yeah and right. I'm sure yeah. they enjoyed having having this there and having you a part of this Absolutely. so I mean I it, it seems like there's a one of the many themes that are a part of this is just family yeah I mean that's the thing that ultimately I guess everyone can relate to is that we all have family drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but 
we also only have a short time to be here and we don't know mm -hmm. how long we're going to be here and so it's a matter of getting over it yeah. you know what i mean and it's so and, hard right but it's mm -hmm. such an important message something that so many of us it need is. to do it is yeah. and hopefully this season is about that you know yeah. what i mean people forgetting the bad stuff and mm -hmm. coming together so you mentioned dawn and that you two had a, a great connection yes her, her sister for those of you just tuning in yes. her sister as a part of the film but with the director who you said was also the writer <sighs> of this victoria yes now How she's was like a sister in real life mm -hmm. um First of all, she wrote the story, which I'm just amazed by how her mind works. Um, and she called me and actually offered me the part. We've worked together before, way back in Diagnosis Murder Days. I know you oh, two. Oh, okay. That, which cute Not self. <laughs> <laughs> you don't but know. We go back. Um, okay. Your mom, probably. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but but she's directed me before. And she actually called me uh, not long after my father passed and she offered me the role and I was like, absolutely. And you know, I was telling her about the passing and she felt guilty. She was like, oh, I'm so sorry to call you about this. I was like, no, you have no idea what a blessing mm -hmm. this is. And so to be able to translate and even use that mm -hmm. in the film was just amazing. And I'm just so glad that I, well, at least I hope I did what she wanted. Yeah, I mean, from, from, from what I see, you absolutely did. I I'm mean, proud did. of it. Yeah, I'm I was going to say, lie. what is it like being an actress and then you see yourself, right? Like, it's hard to even, like, hear yourself if you remember, like, boy, uh, answering machines. Like, yes. you used to hear your voice. It'd be so weird. Yes. So what is it like to actually see yourself in, in, in acting roles? Well, it's challenging for me because I'm an, I'm an acting coach and a director. Oh, so my okay. eye is all over everything, mm -hmm. and I am definitely my hardest critic. But when I tell you that I sat there and I was proud of me and I actually made myself emotional, I wow. almost felt guilty. I was like, Am I, is that okay to feel something? Yes. And it's me. So yeah, I really, I really hope everybody else gets from it what I did. I, I enjoyed it. I love that you can, that you're proud of yourself for yeah. this. I do. And it, and you that know, that's you can, hard that to say, can, right? It's People hard to say, say that. right? It's yeah. hard to say, but you should be, yeah. you know, and it's, it's okay to feel that way. Yeah. So I love that. I love that you said that. What mm -hmm. I think is so cool about this too is that this is a, a Christmas message that we don't often get. This is a storyline that I don't know if I've ever seen in a film. Yeah, the whole thing about, you know, two sisters growing up together while well, being split apart as mm -hmm. young girls and one staying in one country and one going to another and just the whole, the, the narratives that they both create that are just so toxic. And then eventually when they are all that they have, mm -hmm. You know, we get to see how they work that out. Yeah, I know. Okay. She's not I giving us tell much, you much about that, more than so, that. Right? That's what we have to watch. Okay, so this is your moment. We, we're out of time, but if you've got a message for our Good Day Atlanta viewers, getting them to tune in, watch this this Christmas, what would you like to tell them? Just BET Plus, December 15th. And if you can't make it on that day, just watch it, period, because there's a message in there. There's yeah. a message of love and compassion and forgiveness. And why else are we here? Why else are we here? Beautiful. Right? Charmin, thank you so much thank for coming you, in today. Thank you, lovely. Appreciate it's it. It's such a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. <laughs> you can stream Blackjack Christmas on BET Plus on December 15th. It's 939. We'll check in now with Good Day's Buck Lanford. He's got more of our top stories, Buck. At least after seven years and countless guests and trending moments, Trevor Noah officially signed off as host of The Daily Show. But during his farewell, the comedian talked about the times he couldn't fill seats. I remember when we started the show, we couldn't get enough people to fill an audience. <laughs> And you know, I always think it's good. That's how comedy is funny enough. I remember all my shows, people didn't, there weren't tickets, at, you know, everyone was just, were empty seats. Um, and, then I, and then I look at this now, I don't take it for granted ever. Every seat that has ever been filled to watch something that I'm doing, I always appreciate because I know the empty seat that sits behind it. So thank you. The show will now go on hiatus starting January 17th. It will return with a lineup of guest hosts trying to uh, uh, trying to perform for the permanent spot. Comedians and actors including Chelsea Handler, Wanda Sykes and John Leguizamo are expected to be in the running. A new docu-series on investigation discovery is working to uncover some of the, mis the mysteries surrounding the show Glee. The Price of Glee is a three-part series focusing on the success of the show as well as its darker sides. It will dig into the deaths of three main actors, Naya Rivera, Corey Monteith, and Mark Selling. Here's a clip of the trailer that's just been released. Three major cast members dead. I don't want to say the C word, the curse word. But that's where your mind goes. Fame can be poisonous. My first reaction was blame. I still feel like there's someone to blame. 
The trailer features a number of Glee adjacent figures, but it's unclear if actual cast members were involved in the series. The Price of Glee airs on Investigation Discovery and Discovery Plus on January 16th. Oscar nominated actor Terrence Howard is stepping away from acting. He announced his formal retirement during a red carpet event for The Best Man, The Final Chapters. Howard admits he doesn't want to do an impersonation of himself anymore. The announcement comes after he made similar comments back in 2019, claiming that he would step down from acting after the end of the Fox hit series Empire. But in the meantime, you can catch him in the new series, The Best Man, The Final Chapters, streaming on Peacock on December 22nd. Lee. Why didn't you tell me this man rolls like this? I told you no, already. No, you didn't. I did. What you said? I did this. What do this mean? Man, speak English to me. That means I go this way and you go this way. I go that way, you go this way. Yes. Okay. Christmas is arriving a little early for Rush Hour fans. Jackie Chan says he plans to expand the box office hit. The martial arts star announced he is in talks to make a fourth movie while speaking to an audience at the Red Sea Film Festival in Saudi Arabia yesterday. Chan starred alongside Chris Tucker in the first three films, and this year also marks Jackie Chan's 60th anniversary in the film business. So no heads way. up, you got time wow. now to watch the first three and get ready for this one, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, I, what do you think? I would love for there to be a fourth. Yeah, I've got to go back and watch them. It's been so long. Yeah, yeah I remember a lot of laughs. It was Funny a good movie. moments. Yeah. They were a good pair. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Really you know, fair. Chris Tucker delivers lines like nobody else. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I love it. All right. Thanks, Buck. Our hot topic today it's the perfect cross between a cake and a cookie. Today we celebrate its ooey gooey goodness on this National Brownie Day. And whether it's a chocolate one or maybe a blondie, there really are endless recipes and variations. So if it's homemade, that's great. Maybe you bought it from your favorite bakery. It really is the perfect day to indulge. I mean, you got to have a brownie on National Brownie Day. So that brings us to today's hot topic question. When it comes to your brownie, do you like the center or the corner piece? We want to know. All right. DeRay says corner pieces because they're more crunchy okay so that's a vote for corner sherry says corners and edges must have walnuts you know what I, who i used to think had the best brownies and they've changed the recipe chick-fil-a used to have the best brownies with like the fudge on top and they had walnuts on top too they were so good i miss those so yes yes to the walnuts john says the corner piece will have the combined effect of crispy and softness they go first don't tell my doctor oh so john's eating all the corners in the pan carla says i just eat the whole pan I'm not picky when it comes to brownies. Ann says, all of it, mine. <laughs> it sounds like we have quite a few brownie lovers among you. So let us know about you. What do you like? Do you like the centerpieces or do you like around the, the edges and those corners? Head to our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page or tweet us at Good Day Atlanta. And I'll tell you, I like the centerpieces because I like just the, the, the ooey, gooey. I'll eat any of them, but if I got to pick, I would take one of those center ones. That's my favorite. Well, coming up on Good Day Atlanta, the world stage is set for the World Cup quarterfinals. But the real question is, how are our Good Day Atlanta brackets looking? We're taking a look at the big board next. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. 
Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Uh, quarterfinal coverage is underway now in Croatia and Brazil. There she is. You thought you were going to come on in, Sharon. <laughs> Try to get out of it, did I know. you? I, they just told me. Uh, I was going to say, it wouldn't be a deal if they we didn't have Sharon. Just so told she is me. here. And while she uh, steps in to join us, Croatia and Brazil will kick things off in just a few minutes. And after that, it's Argentina and the Netherlands at 2 p.m. Come on in. You so, know what you've earned? We're looking at your bracket first because well, you were late. Yeah, well, she's late, but Sharon's been doing better than really any of us when it comes to these well, brackets. So I, mean, I think you let's, well, see. let's take a look. Let's see. All right, so uh, you've got Brazil, which is yeah. just definitely a possibility. Argentina, France. Okay, this one, this one's killed you. I know. But this yeah, was the I one know. where this was the one that uh, surprised a lot of people with yeah. Morocco advancing too. So uh, you're still in pretty good shape. You got both your three, your final four. I think I'm and, gonna be doing uh, yeah, so good. you got a, you got a pretty good shot. Let's and take I a look. I think Brazil's going to do really well today too because they have Neymar playing. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely oh, going to. Here we go. How come I, she doesn't do the like the the interviews on World Cup stuff? Sharon really does even know. Do? All right, uh oh. Oh, your oh. champion, your your uh, not your champion. Rolling. No, your champion is out. Keep it rolling. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be a problem. <laughs> Moving on to the next. You know, one. you didn't do too badly, except this one killed you right here. Yeah, this yeah, one killed you right here. So many upsets. But this is the one where the upsets had Morocco advanced out of this one. So that. That killed a lot of people, yeah, but it yeah. really it, it really hurts it, you it for sure. Me. Who are we going to do next? Are we going to do you or are we going to do Paul? Because we have Paul and Joanne joining let's us, so you, let's Buck. do Buck. Okay. All right, we'll check that real quick. All right, so I'm, I'm oh. kind of like you. This one's, yeah. this one's messed me up as well. Um, a, still got three of my four alive, too, so. Maybe I'll pull for Morocco to win this, so it'll mess up everybody oh, else's. Oh, we can uh, look. We have Joanne and Paul. Okay, who do you want to look at first? Let's look at uh, let's, let's look at Joanne first. Yeah, let's see, ladies first. All right, Joanne, here we are. Joanne's been doing. A, I mean, she's Joanne's been doing pretty well too. <laughs> she's got, uh, you know, she's Joanne, got. They're, they're um, <laughs> oh, here we showing go. your bracket right now. How do you feel about your bracket? Well, I know I'm not dead last. <laughs> There's that. Well, she only that. knows that because okay. she's probably standing next the to Lord the Lord and Lady of the Manor. All have right. gotten a divorce now. The Nutcracker oh. will be very different tonight with Clara's <laughs> parents separated. having been split up. Now there's going to be two different Christmas parties oh, for Clara. All right, are you guys ready to know yeah. where wait, we're Wait, wait, wait. We haven't looked at your bracket yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's pull let's that up real quick. Okay, look at my bracket. Okay. Go ahead. Just yeah, it's Do embarrassing. Have to look at it. You don't have to look no, at it. No, it's not. It's actually not It's not bad. terrible. It's, it's about as good as my dancing. You're okay. still. Oh, well, that's debatable. <laughs> 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 that's debatable. All right, so I've got the uh, the World Cup bracket challenge from okay. Boarding Pass Coffee at number 17 right now. But the top here at Good Day Atlanta is Buck Lanford. All right, so Buck still holding has gold 50. No, 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 no. You've got 40. What do you have? 40. Two points, but this is something we didn't mention last time. Buck, what? Right at your heels with 41 points is Tim Whaley. Tim, really? you better be Buck Lanford. Tim Whaley. I didn't yes. know Tim was We're back today. Tim. What? Okay. Go Tim. So those are in the 40s, right? So now we go down to 38 points. That's Sharon Lawson. How did that nice. happen? How that's very Sharon, respectable. Who, who helped, who helped her? That's right. That's my question, too. I think it's too. a team of people that may have Okay. Helped uh, Sharon's oh got a glam squad goodness. who's also you helping her pick everything. Like okay. You know, so I then. Don't know you like that. I don't even have to worry about it. We scroll down. I don't even know who, who's playing, to tell you the truth. <laughs> 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 that's a good point. All right. We're too focused on our dancing, Sharon. We're focused on our performance tonight. Ron Gant comes in with 35 points. Ron is next. And then, Elise, we do that long lonely yeah, scroll to right. the bottom and yeah, keep scrolling. going okay <laughs> with 29 points is elise Edie. thank you very much 26 you points right. is you got some points joanne felt yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Is you that are, me you're fifth from the bottom all right and coming in second from the bottom, Paul Omicron. Milliken, but look who I'm beating, everyone. Beating Omicron. Omicron is still in dead oh, last. We are wow. beating Omicron. Omicron. Thank, Thank you very much. I'm so happy. 
whoever that person is, I'm buying them a cup of coffee Listen, when all this is no over. No, you know what? I'll buy Omicron all. a ticket to come see the Nutcracker there opening tonight at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. Your live preview is coming up in just a few minutes on Good Day Atlanta. Always oh, good when we can beat Omicron at anything. That right? is true. They wanted us to take a look at the yeah. bracket. This is the actual bracket, right? So this is so let's go ahead and make our predictions for who's going to win. England, France, ladies. France. Uh, I'll go England. Gosh. Well, we got to do one. Let's go with yeah. the favorite, just to be safe. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, that is true. We have. Yeah. To <laughs> so uh, okay. Portugal and, Mar and Morocco. You're ranked better so than me. We'll go this, with your This picks. is Cinderella right here. Cinderella going to continue? What do you think? Oh, but that's you, with you and I both oh, need that to happen. I think in, in our in the big picture, we need Morocco to win. I don't know if it's going to happen. Oh, y'all. Your that's... call. <sighs> okay, Morocco. <laughs> I that helps wanna, you, Sharon. It helps jinx. you. I don't want to jinx, you. I, but yeah, I don't want to jinx the situation. All right. I don't want to. Netherlands, Argentina, they locked the U.S. out of this thing. So we, I guess we need to pull for Argentina, right? There you go. Elise? Go for it. All right. Okay. And then here we go. Croatia versus Brazil. I think I know everybody's answer on that. Brazil. All right. So there it is, your go final four. I think this one's a, this is a little bit of a wild card here. That'd but I think those other though. three That'd are pretty, pretty likely. Or, yeah. You know, this should be a good match, too, though. Agree. Cool. We'll see. All right. We'll see how we do. As long as we beat Omicron, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> that is true. And just a quick reminder, World Cup quarterfinal coverage underway now. Croatia and Brazil kick things off in just a few minutes. And after that, it's Argentina and the Netherlands at 2 p.m. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Bad Bunny says he is ready for some well-deserved rest in 2023. The global superstar announced he plans to take a break next to focus on himself. Bad Bunny says he plans to focus on physical and emotional health and to really enjoy all of his achievements. And wasn't he like the most streamed artist on Spotify? Something like that. It was some big honor that, yeah, he is. He deserves a break. He's been working hard for sure. Well, back to our hot topic today. Happy National Brownie Day. That'll put a smile on your face. We wanted to know when it comes to your brownie, do you like the scent? Center or the corner pieces and Deanne is, is is really saying what so many of you have said about this 
any piece that I can get a hold of is her message. And like I said, we're getting countless comments of y'all saying all, all of the above. Hayden says, edges only. Nobody better lay a finger on my edges. I mean, people who like edges, y'all really, really are into the edges. I'm center all the way. I'll eat the middle of that brownie and probably leave the outside for you. Dennis says, doesn't matter to me as long as they're rich and gooey. Cake-like brownies aren't brownies. Ah, okay. Shane says, Custom Cake Studio in Georgia has the best brownies I've ever had. The corner piece is the best to me. I like that little bit of crunch. Andy says, you mean we're supposed to only have one? Asking for a friend. No, you're not supposed to just have one. It's a minimum of two brownies. Carol says, corner, I like the cake-like brownies. You guys are all over the place, and I love, <laughs> I love every single second of it. So we want to hear from you. Do you like the centerpiece of the brownie? Do you like the corner piece, the edges? or the whole thing. Head to our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page or tweet us at Good Day Atlanta. So ladies, of course, I've got to hear from you. What's your pick? Uh, I like both, but you were saying. I love the edges. I which do. Which is interesting. Yeah. I love she the edges. You like, like the, the crunch? crunchiness? Yes, it's the crunchiness. Yeah. I love that. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, I will eat all. Right? I will eat all. You yeah. need that cake pan then that's like the, the edges. Mm, right. Have you seen that? Exactly. You need that, yes. Mm. yes, I need that. Okay. What about you, Sharon? I need the like? center and I need a scoop of ice cream. Oh, yeah. my. Did you or just have to milk. do that to us? And warm. I know. Oh, can you imagine? With some chocolate chips and then they even melt too. Oh my God, we love this that. is oh. this is too much. This is too much. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking about it. We're dreaming about it. <laughs> exactly. At least thank you. 9:57 is the time coming up on Good Day Atlanta. Get ready for another case of Who Done It with Janelle Monet, Daniel Craig, and more stars. We'll talk about Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery with Janelle and the director Ryan Johnson. Plus, have you heard of Pilk? Huh? Pilk. It's a uh, mixture of Pepsi uh. and milk that a new ad has been trying right now. And apparently this morning, we are also going to give this a shot. Oh. Let you know. <laughs> and what have you been eager to cook this year? We're taking a look at the recipes people Google the most. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan From Fox 5 News, this is Good Day Atlanta at 10 a.m. And good Friday morning. Welcome to our online edition of Good Day Atlanta at 10. The World Cup is airing right now on Fox 5. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brooks Honor. And I'm Sharon Lawson. Joanne has the morning off. And here's what's coming up this hour. You must be really great at Clue, huh? I'm very bad at dumb things. Ticking boxes, running around, searching all the rooms. It's just a terrible, terrible game. Bad at dumb things. <laughs> it's another guest to find out who done it in the upcoming movie Glass Onion Knives Out Mystery. Singer and actress Janelle Monet is part of the star studded cast. Janelle and director Ryan Johnson, right here in the studios. Plus, this. A minute, you're standing here, you're feeling like a knucklehead trying to separate <laughs> bottles from soap. The next minute, you realize 
You're saving lives. That guy, mm -hmm. it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. The Discovery series, Dirty Jobs, returns with a new season. I sat down with show host Mike Rowe to talk about what you can expect. And got pilk? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's a unique drink mix of Pepsi and milk that actress Lindsay Lohan has folks try in. In case you haven't done so yet, apparently we're going to try it ourselves. Hmm. hmm. Okay, right? Hmm, indeed. Huh. But first, let's get a look at this morning's top stories with Good Day's Elise Seedy. Elise, good Bottoms morning. Bottoms up, ladies. You can come <laughs> join us. Yes, Why come on. Join us. <laughs> Give it a shot. Let's all take this. Uh. All right. <laughs> ladies, thank you. And we begin now with some breaking news. Just hours ago, the man wanted for stealing an SUV with an elderly woman inside was arrested. The suspect was arrested in DeKalb County overnight. Good Day's Mark Teichner has more on the ordeal. Well, that arrest certainly will bring some closure to this family, but one thing that has them very relieved is that their mom is home safe and sound. I'm just relieved that she's all right now. Philip McCurry picks up his mom, putting an end to an hours-long ordeal. Got my mama back. I thought I lost her. It all started Thursday afternoon in Jonesboro. Shirley McCurry sat in the passenger seat of this SUV while her nurse went into a convenience store on North Main Street. Locked the car, but my mom must have unlocked the car. Surveillance video shows a man dressed in light colored clothing who appears to be talking on his cell phone. He checks out the SUV, walks over as the passenger window rolls down. The man gestures toward Shirley, gets behind the wheel, and drives away. The guy carjacked the car with my mom in it. Hours went by with no sign of either Shirley or the SUV. Tara, I mean, it's the, the worst. The worst thing that could happen to a son. Police say the kidnapper drove all the way to Baston Restaurant on Howell Mill Road in West Midtown. He handed her $10 and then he was like, I'm just going to park around the corner. The carjacker took off. Shirley sat in the restaurant for hours until a host called her family on her cell phone. Why would do something like this to, to, you know, a sweet lady like my mom, you know, thank God he didn't hurt her. At this point, we haven't been given any kind of update about the arrest, where in DeKalb County it took place, when it happened, and the name of the suspect and what charges he or she could end up facing. If we get that, we'll let you know right away. Reporting from Clayton County, I'm Mark Teichner for Good Day Atlanta. Well, one of the two victims gunned down in the shooting near Atlantic Station will be laid to rest tomorrow. Twelve-year-old Zion Charles was killed after a shootout in the, on the 17th Street Bridge nearly two weeks ago. Fifteen-year-old Cameron Jackson was also killed. Charles' loved ones will hold a funeral tomorrow afternoon at the First Iconium Baptist Church on Moreland Avenue in southeast Atlanta. And to address youth violence, members of Atlanta's Public Safety Commission say they want to hear from you. They'll hold a community meeting for residents to suggest strategies. That's set for 6.30 Tuesday night at Atlanta City Hall. Well, new this morning, we are getting new images of WNBA star Brittany Griner as she returned to U.S. soil overnight. She arrived in San Antonio after her release from a Russian prison where she was held for nine months after her arrest for having cannabis oil in her luggage. And while Griner's release is being celebrated, the Biden administration is facing some pretty tough questions about the terms of the deal. The White House failed to win the release of other Americans like Paul Whelan, who's been in prison for years, none of whom generated the same level of attention, though, as Griner. But the Biden administration says their options were limited. Our choices was uh, Brittany or no one at all. Bringing home one American or no American at all. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. The prisoner swap solidified the release of one of the world's most notorious arm dealers, Victor Bout. Well, now to a Fox 5 News alert on overcrowding at metro area animal shelters. The problem is so bad, they're putting out an urgent call for adoptions while making the process easier and more affordable. Good day's Lindsay Tooman gives us a closer look at what can be done about this. Local animal organizations I spoke to say they've seen this kind of situation before where they're really filled to the brim with animals, but it's never gone on for this long, and that's really what's creating this tipping point. Animal shelters all across Metro Atlanta have been seeing a concerning trend. More animals coming in, fewer being adopted out. We've been over capacity all year long. Um, we're also seeing an alarming increase in the number of animals that are abandoned at our gates as well. Joe 
Bill Labriola is the executive director at Paws Atlanta. He says when the shelters are over capacity, it also impacts local rescue operations. For example, when people abandon animals here at the rescue, they could previously call the county for help. But DeKalb and Fulton counties are both out of housing space. It's creating an enormous strain on our resources here, whether it's staff, whether it's our facility or our financial resources, because these animals were not part of our operating budget and plan. DeKalb County ran out of housing space back in August. Fulton County ran out of room in October. Cobb County says it's at high capacity, but still taking strays, and so is Gwinnett County. Jessica Kruger with Best Friends Animal Society says rescue groups have no space either. They're also seeing adoptions decrease, but then they're also, they rely heavily on transfers out. And so then when we're also seeing the adoptions decrease, we can't take as many animals from them. Kruger says the community can help by adopting, fostering, volunteering, or donating, even sharing posts on social media media. You can and can make a difference and you know really go in and help shelter workers and the animals in the shelter. These local rescues tell me they're not exactly sure why they're seeing this kind of demand and for such a long period of time. It's probably a mix of factors, one being tough financial times for so many people, but they also say anything can help from adopting to fostering to donating your time or your resources that can help these shelters and these rescues. That's the latest from DeKalb County. I'm Lindsay Tooman for Good Day Atlanta. Well, Georgia's gas tax remains suspended until early January. This is the seventh time the governor has extended the suspension, and this time it'll run through January 10th. The gas tax usually accounts for about 30 cents a gallon. According to AAA, Georgia's average is 2.92. And those are some of the stories we are following this morning. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're not ready for it. I know you're like, it's not going to be that bad. All right. <laughs> well, it's 1007 and we've got Buck and Elise here for this. Mm -hmm. They're this, so excited this for this stellar segment. topic that we have. It's a strange drink concoction that we're trying getting attention because of a holiday commercial that stars Lindsay Lohan. So the drink is called Pilk with a P. It's a mixture of Pepsi and milk. Lohan and the beverage company joined forces for the ad, encouraging people to add Pepsi to the milk that they leave out for Santa. Now, this drink, as you can imagine, it has mixed reviews on social media's uh, Pilk has actually been around for a while. Didn't know that. It was yeah. featured in the classic 70s sitcom Laverne and Shirley. And now mm. today we are going to give it a shot. You know what? If you make this for Santa, he's not leaving any gifts. <laughs> he's not leaving. <laughs> I don't even put Look, milk in even, my coffee. It's e right. That's you know? true. Right. It's right. even starting to curl up. Now that's it's a curling. thing, right? It is. It I is. mean, is that supposed to happen? It is. Okay, cheers, we're gonna cheers. cheers. Wait, hold on. Okay. <sighs> cheers. cheers. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Chug, 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 chug. Not chugging. I. I mean, you know what? It's not as bad as I thought it would be. It just tastes like a melted float. Yeah, or like a creamy mm, yeah. Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yes, a cream soda. Or like a cream. Yes. Okay. This is this wasn't as bad. I was giving this a bad rap. It it's wasn't fine, as horrible. But I'll I mean, probably yeah, never drink it again gonna, the rest of my life. Ever. Right. I don't no, hate it's it. Not good. Yeah. It's not I don't hate it. Okay. So I know. It's, it's like not good. I'm not Pepsi. I'm 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 Team Coca Cola. So maybe if it was Coca Cola, but then you'd have you to change well, the name and everything. Too, I also so. don't know. No, no, that's no. not terrible. It's I don't know what the ratio bad. was that they mixed. Is it 50-50? Right? Because it I'm tastes. Not quite sure. It's more of a They're Pepsi flavor to it's, me yeah. than the Pepsi stronger than the milk. Yeah, maybe I that's. Too. It's almost like just a splash of milk. Like yeah. they almost yeah. just did like just. So I'm a wondering splash. what the, the wonder what Laverne did. You know. You know what? I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna binge it all weekend and try to figure it out. Let us know. We'll have an answer by Monday. I'd say like maybe like a six out of ten, which. To me, wow! But to you, I feel like it's that's a different. Well, I'm not a milk person, <laughs> and I'm not. not a a, I'm definitely thing. not a Pepsi person. So what, like a one or a half? Okay, you oh, were you were not doing that. I'm not doing yeah, it. You were, no, you were not interested it, at all. It but. wasn't that bad. It right. wasn't that bad. Yeah, I'm, we've had work. Okay, I I will retract my earlier statement that I, I was very <laughs> concerned about trying this and it wasn't bad. Well, what happened to like that mimosa thing that they were talking about before? Like, why couldn't we try that? Why wasn't that brought to us in studio? Why we have to have pilk? Like, <laughs> right, right. Whose idea was that? And, and why not we Mepsi? So many, I mean, why not Mepsi? I mean, pill, you know, you could go either way with that. Mepsi? Milk and Pepsi? That even, yeah, pill.
It's pilk. You gotta it's have like, pilk. Yeah, that's the whole thing is just hot topic. The whole thing is just horrible. The whole thing. The whole thing is just horrible. It's a big note so for sure. Funny. Our executive producer, don't do this again. She stopped it on the way to work just just for this moment. Right. Right. Effort was put into making you know this happen. What? Can we get bagels and coffee next time? Because <laughs> we did this for you. Or the mimosa. Chick fil A. Right. Right. The mini kit. The, 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 the mimosa kit. Can we try that, please? Perfect time. I'm glad you guys tried it. Yeah. We tried it. Coming up, guys. Good day. First and last time. Never again. Well, Trevor Noah has signed off for the final time on the Daily Show. We'll hear his final. Final words, but first, get ready for another case of Who Done It with Janelle Monet, Daniel Craig, and more stars. And we'll talk about Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery with Janelle and the director, Ryan Johnson, next. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. The morning brief. Characters, progressive politicians, and a whole lot more. Writer-director Ryan Johnson first brought us the 2019 hit film Knives Out, followed up by Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery that opened up in theaters last month before migrating to Netflix. Well, the latest installment set on a Greek island starring Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, Janelle Monae, Kate Hudson, and plenty more celebrity cameos, all trying to solve a murder mystery. Take a look. Can you spot the other thing? The real thing this group has in common? Andy, come on. Oh, Lionel. Everybody knows who Lionel works for. That's no secret. And we know who bankrolled Claire's campaign. But when nobody, nobody would touch Bertie with a 10-foot pole because she went on Oprah and compared herself to Harriet Tubman in spirit. Who do you think she is? This is great. This is great. Joining us right now, <laughs> Oscar nominee, writer-director Ryan Johnson, and actress and Grammy-nominated singer, rapper Janelle Monae. Good morning to Good both morning. of you. Thank Good you so much Atlanta. for joining oh, us, right? 
Oh, now. my goodness. This is great. This really is great. And let's talk about it because Daniel Craig returns in this series now, and he is actually playing the fictional detective. So tell us a little bit more about the series and about this particular one now, the second one, and uh, the murder mystery. Yeah. Well, let's start with you, Ryan. Well, this all mm -hmm. comes out of me growing up loving Agatha Christie. Mm -hmm. Loving the good whodunit. Yes. Loving the good mystery. And also loving those movies I was watching when I was a kid of the Agatha Christie movies that had the all-star cast mm. and their big, fun, kind of set in beautiful places murder mysteries. And that's kind of what we we're trying to do here. And we were just watching, you know, your character, Cassandra Andy Brandt. So tell yeah. us more about playing her. It looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, too much fun. Right? Too much fun. Um, I mean, I just have to just thank Ryan over mm -hmm. and over again, being the writer, being the director, trusting me with this role. This character is mysterious, smart, brilliant, big ideas, but complicated past with the rest of these uh, these folks, these characters, a lot yeah. of drama, I mean, set in Greece. Uh, oh, I had an opportunity goodness. to really just go, honestly, to the next level as an actor because of this role, so I'm so thankful. And, and you know, it's really incredible, too, because we have all of these A-list actors that were present on this, uh, Ryan. How was it? Was it, it? was it a challenge to have them all really in one big setting right mm -hmm. there and to mm -hmm. shoot all of it right there? Yeah, so I mean, they're not different. Yeah. They're not set up in different places. Yeah. We had them all in one particular room at one time. Well, you got the, a group of actors like this. You got Edward Norton. You got mm -hmm. Chanel Monet. You got yes. Dick Craig. You got Kate Hudson. You want to get them all in the frame. And everybody, that was a cool thing. Every one of these people are like big movie stars who have carried their own movies. And they come together in this movie and they're really an ensemble. They really all work together and click. And, and that was cool to see work yeah. on the frame. And he couldn't be more cool. Like, never lost his cool. I'm like, all these personalities. Yeah. But no ego. Everybody really? was there. Sure. Like, we want to do right by the script. They just, we just wanted to have fun, and we did. He created, curated such a fun family vibe yeah. for us. So it was just so, so easy and fun coming in every day. And this was your first time being on it as well, too, right? Yeah, being in this the, particular one. Yes. Series, oh, yeah, but I was a fan one. of the first one. Yes. And I was a fan of anything Ryan has put out. I was like, if he calls me for a three second car commercial, <laughs> I don't care what it is. It's a yes. So when you got that call, yeah. oh, I, were you just like, really? This is happening. Yeah. This is really happening. And we're going to Greece. Oh, we're going to Greece. Get me get me out of here. Like I threw <laughs> I, I, was, I had been on my couch for a while because you know things were being canceled. It was yeah. the, at the at the pandemic was happening. A lot of people didn't understand how to do big productions and um, you know just trying to figure it all out. And, mm -hmm. and so for this to be the one thing that I got to do returning back, um, honestly, was a dream. And what do you think about? I mean, we have so many. Uh, genres out there but there's something about the who done it murder mystery mm. that I mean every generation just I mean they just it just resonates with them what do you mm. think that is Ryan I think it's just an incredibly fun genre the murder mystery you got all these varied suspects and they all kind of like <laughs> want to kill each other and it's fun it also like you said that's the thing I remember growing up watching those movies with my whole family being a kid yeah. and I think it's and that's what we're aiming for here also something the kids the adults and also the older yeah. people in the family everybody's gonna enjoy it together and and I mean, that's that's a treat. And just the background, too. I was just looking. I'm like, I'm just captivated. Oh. Just looking at the yeah. scenery as well. Beautiful I mean, was release. that you're, you're thinking like, oh. where should I put this? Hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, hmm. I was I was writing it in lockdown during 2020. So I was oh, sitting yes. at home and like a lot of wishing us, you could travel. I was like, fade in Greek <laughs> islands. Let's see, let's see if this works. <laughs> and uh, it worked. It worked. So congratulations. Definitely in order. Janelle, you were just awarded Best Supporting Actress. And Glass Onion, Knives Out Mystery was voted Best Ensemble by the Atlanta Film Critics. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. How oh incredible God. is that? I love you guys. I love this place. This is, you know, where I, I got my my start in my career, right in the AUC, and wow. you know, to be a part of this film, which this genre is so fun. Just mm -hmm. like Ryan mentioned, everybody can watch it. We had an opportunity to release it in theaters for a week, and seeing it in theaters is its own experience. Watching it on the couch, it's going to be its own experience. Watching experience, it in yeah. the bed, like it just holds up. I've seen it seven times, and literally, I'm finding new clues that yeah. I didn't, you know, 
I didn't even see and I'm in the movie so <laughs> um, thank you Atlanta for 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 just you know supporting this film and supporting me for how long oh but how long course. you guys have it means the world but of course and you're gonna have a third installment too can you to tell us it. anything about I that I got nothing I'm starting oh, to cover you got any ideas on. you what do you have for me what do you have any for me give me some ideas uh, maybe you could take yeah. it to Jamaica Jake, Ooh, oh, well, we I were mean, just talking okay. about Jim. That's you a good idea. I might have to get some plastic surgery and become because you know none of the actors get to come back to the. I know oh, it's a whole new cast it's every be a time. Whole new cast, whole new scenery. But maybe you put a but mustache gonna, on. You could probably do fake that. mustache and like some makeup. I have yeah. to because yeah. if we go to Jamaica, yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Well, I know I look a patois <laughs> if you want me to come. Ooh, back. Okay, bring it down. Let's do it. I would. Oh my! Could you just imagine? Well, you know what? We know that you wear so many. different different hats but we love you as a singer rapper as well Thank too you. and we understand that you have another project that's coming out in the new year oh you know I I will say after shooting this film I got really inspired to work and and to have something to say and a lot to celebrate so yeah just be looking forward next year 2023 you know it's float season it's 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 really you know staying floating in gratitude yeah. and uh, being present being mm. present in all that we do Mm -hmm. I know I probably can't ask, but if you were just to choose one, acting <laughs> or singing, could you choose? Yeah, do it all. I mean, I think storytelling is what I love most. And I think whenever I have something, a story to tell in music, and, and you do it, you know, in yeah. acting, you do it, in fashion, sure. you do it. And, and, and I'm so thankful that I get an opportunity um, to to have people want to collaborate with me and want to want to hear what it is that I have to say and and and. All of that is just like the biggest blessing. So I welcome it all. And definitely you're a creative, so that was the best way of saying it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Janelle, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us this oh, morning. Definitely a pleasure. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery will be available on Netflix December 23rd. Check it out. Yeah. Still ahead, there's a new docuseries that looks into the dark side of the once popular show Glee. And what have you been eager to cook this year? We're taking a look at the recipes people Googled the most in 2022. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you.
Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered to happen, but it did after seven years and countless guests and trending moments. Trevor Noah officially signed off as host of The Daily Show. And last night he gave fans a farewell and talked about the times he couldn't even fill the seats. I remember when we started the show, we couldn't get enough people to fill an audience. And you know, I always think it's good. That's how comedy is funny enough. I remember all my shows, people didn't, there weren't tickets, that, you know, everyone, the empty seats. Um, and, then I, and then I look at this now, I don't take it for granted ever. Every seat that has ever been filled to watch something that I'm doing, I always appreciate because I know the empty seat that sits behind it. So thank you. Wow. Emotional too, right? Yeah, I mean, what, things have changed a lot. The <laughs> right? show will now go on a hiatus and starting January 17th, it will return with a lineup of guest hosts trying to try out for that permanent spot. So comedians and actors, including Chelsea Handler and Wanda Sykes, are expected to be in the running. With enough patience, a suspect will often interrogate himself. Netflix releasing this trailer to the gothic murder mystery, The Pale Blue Eyes, starring Christian Bale. He plays a veteran detective who teams up with a young Edgar Allan Poe to solve the mysterious death of a West Point cadet in 1830s upstate New York. It arrives in select theaters December 23rd and will be available to stream on January 6th. Well, hip, hip, hooray, the popular Prime video series Harlem is coming back for a second season. Fans should expect to see classic cast members as well as some new additions. Then favorite actors such as Rick Fox, Sherry Shepard, and more will make an appearance. Sherry was actually talking about that when she was right here on the couch. Mm -hmm. And the second season will follow Megan Good's character, Camille, as she navigates challenging life changes. Season two will drop February 3rd. And still to come, a pool liner fixer and a hotel soap recycler. <laughs> yeah, that's just some of the work that will be highlighted in the new season of Dirty Jobs. We spoke with host Mike Rowe about the premiere but first, let's check in with Good Day's Paul Milliken. Hey, Paul. Yes, welcome one, welcome all to my Christmas party. Good morning. How's everyone feeling this morning? Good. Hey, it is opening night for the Nutcracker here at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center, presented by Atlanta Dance Theater. And there she is. Clara has got her beautiful Nutcracker, and she's about to go on a magical journey. We've got your first look at the show coming up. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you.
Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. The Morning Brief gives you all the top stories to start your day. And the GDA Download delivers a daily recap of Trump doing. And we are ready to thrill audiences starting tonight. Is everyone ready? Yes, it is opening night for the Nutcracker presented by Atlanta Dance Theater. Joanne, how you feeling? I think I said it earlier. I'm more nervous than the dancers. But I I'm know. excited. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah, okay, so let me ask you quickly. How many years have you been in the Nutcracker with Atlanta Dance Theater? I think this is the seventh year of the Nutcracker and the sixth that I've been wow. in it. You'd okay. think I'd know the steps by now. Well, th I was just going to say, this is really disappointing <laughs> that you're not just falling into it every year, Joan. we got to relearn. It's a, it, and it, it is work to put on this show. Right. I mean, we started rehearsing just us, what, in October. Yeah, yeah. The dancers started rehearsing long before that. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of the dancers, wait, this side first. Everyone look at the camera and wave to the camera. They are all so talented. And then let's go to the other side. I want to make sure you see all their faces. Look at the amazing costumes. This is really a talented group of people involved with Atlanta Dance Theater. And let's not forget the adults on stage who really, I mean, we just have to keep everyone in line. It's a tough job. Chris and Tiffany over here looking amazing. Matt and Kim as well. All right. So tonight is opening night. It's an exciting night how do you are, are, are you going to be nervous you've done this so many times what do you don't you get a little nervous right when you hear oh the i do because i'm not a dancer okay yes i do oh, well, <laughs> then you're giving me too much credit <laughs> but no i mean every time when we hear the music even when we're not dancing we could just hear it playing yes. and there's that build up of we know okay it's almost time to dance yeah, yeah. well speaking of i think it's almost, almost time, time to, to dance. dance are you ready we'll see we'll see all right look if I hear any heckling in my ear out of Sharon and Direct Brooke during this, always. no, don't you look, I will be, look, I'm, I'm working hard up here. I am the master of the house. I am Paul Stahlbaum and I'm ready to dance. Butler, Butler, where are you? Butler, Butler. Thank you very much. Go for it. He can at least step, you know. I mean, step. he could step forward. That's good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two. We should go he got, in no, the definitely. audience and hold signs. Just like one, two, three, four. Oh, he's, just to help him out. But Joanne looks stunning, she looks doesn't elegant. she? She looks elegant. She is graceful. She is beauty. She is grace. She, she is, is everything. everything. Yes. Everything. Everything. We will Paul? go for no, Paul. Oh, don't skip too oh, much. I don't Paul. want to break Paul, 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 anything. Paul. I don't want to break anything. All right. He's off, he's off the camera. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Woo, Woo, that was amazing. Joanne, Brooke, you are awesome. I can awesome, hear every Joanne. word. You're I expect awesome. that oh, wait, out of Sharon Lawson. <laughs> Brooke, Sonny. <laughs> Honor, you are in so what, much what are you trouble. Talking about? You know I what, Paul? We are word. still recovering from you not bringing us anything yesterday. <laughs> Drop the mic. Thank Whoa. you. That he part. Did not bring us a that I have no response part. to that except to say, come and see the Nutcracker, everybody. We open tonight. No, as long as you're taking me to dinner. Great job. Yes. They oh, did a great job. Wonderful. They are great. And that is a great show. Bravo. If bravo. If you haven't seen the Nutcracker, you've got to. It opens tonight and it runs through Sunday at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center. Show times are 7 p.m. tonight and tomorrow and 2 p.m. tomorrow and Sunday. For more information on the show, you can follow links on fox5atlanta.com. Just look under the Good Day section and you can see two of our very own yeah, right? stars. <laughs> <laughs> World renowned. World renowned. <laughs> According to Paul. Yes. Well, well, new this morning, Google is releasing the most search recipes of the year on its platform. And topping the list is Sugo, which I've never heard of, no. apparently. This mm -hmm. is a tomato-based pasta sauce. Other recipes Google users searched for are mango pie. Huh. Uh, and marry me chicken. And marry me huh. chicken is a sandwich recipe from model Bella Hadid. Also made the list after going viral on TikTok. Huh. I wow. have never searched for is that, any of those. Uh, uh, huh. It's almost okay. like the pilk. 
It's right. It's very unusual. <laughs> that sauce, though, I'm kind of interested in that. I like a. I like Just a. Just Google pasta. it, and then you can find out how we'll to do find it. Out. There you go. All right. Well, Mike Rowe is putting on his gloves again ahead of a brand new season of Dirty Jobs, the fan favorite show. It ended back in 2012, but it will make a triumphant return to Discovery later this week. Even diving into the world of a hotel soap recycler. Take a look. And in a hotel one night, I called the front desk and asked what happened to the bar of soap and bottle of shampoo when I was done with it. And they said it was thrown away. So I did some research, kind of did some math, figured out if all uh, hotels were throwing their soap away, we were throwing away millions of bars of soap every single day every out of the hotel. Every day. It's mind boggling. Uh, but the real aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's an interesting one. So we recently sat down with Mike Rowe to talk about what else we can expect for this new season. Talk about, like, why bring it back? I mean, I know it's a favorite, but what was kind of the thought process or did somebody approach you about, hey, we should bring that back? Well, you know, in, in a way, it never really went away. I mean, we, we stopped filming back in 2012 and started filming again a year and a half ago. And um, a lot of people are surprised to hear it's coming back because they've been watching it every single week for the last 20 years. You know, we, we, we just did so many that it's, it never really went away. But as to why I agreed to bring it back, you know, I said I was done. I, we, we'd, we'd done 300. I swore I was out. Uh, it was the lockdowns. It was the fact that essential work became headline news. And I think in a lot of people's minds, Dirty Jobs was sort of the granddaddy of essential working shows. So many shows came out of Dirty Jobs over the years. And so, uh, you know, on social, thousands of people said, Mike, don't be a knucklehead. Bring the show back. It's good for the foundation that you run today. It'll give you a reason to talk about the things that matter to you. And it was fun. Who? Who doesn't want to have fun? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and we will talk about the foundation in just a moment, but I would imagine after this, you know, 10 years since you've filmed a quote-unquote dirty job or you've gone on the scene somewhere, uh, there has been a lot of changes in the job market. There are probably new quote-unquote dirty jobs. So what was that like? Was it difficult to find, like, new jobs to film? No. No. Um you know, I, I worried back in 2005 when we went into the second season that I might be running out of ideas. Um, and then I encouraged the viewers to write in with ideas. So I did and ever since then, man, we've been inundated. Uh, uh, Dirty Jobs is programmed uh, not by the network or by the production company. It's literally programmed by the viewers. All the ideas you see this season came from my Facebook page. People just write in. Hey, Mike, uh, it's the dirtiest pool in America. My dad and I are going to clean it in one day. Come on out and help us. Okay. Right? So that's, that's kind of how it works. And, you know, the show itself, to answer your first question, it, it, I think part of the reason people like it is because we don't, we don't lie to you. You know, we don't edit, really. Uh, not much, anyhow. We, there are no second takes and there's no pre-production, and there's no casting, and there's no scripting or writing. We don't tell anybody what to do or what to say. It's just an honest look at a hard day's work. And for whatever reason, that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, it certainly does. And we will now talk about your foundation. So you have Micro Works, which evolved out of Dirty Jobs. Tell us how that ties into what you have been doing for so long. Well, that thing started back in 2008 on Labor Day, and I started it because it was obvious that even though a lot of people were unemployed in those days during a recession, there were a lot of companies who were struggling to recruit people to do the jobs that did exist. You know, there were a couple of million open positions in 2008, 2009 that didn't require a four-year degree. So I wanted to make a more persuasive case for those jobs. And today, not much has changed except it's worse. You know, we've got 11 million open positions, seven, eight million people sitting on the sidelines, and just a ton of opportunity that I, I don't think people completely understand. Um, 
A lot of people on this show are prospering. Some are millionaires. We don't make a big deal about it on the show exactly. because it's not about it's the money, to, it's about uh, the work. And children, but and all people the are always surprised so to learn about the opportunities that exist of, uh, in the dirt and the opportunities, and the opportunities that years, exist for anybody who wants to learn a skill that's truly in demand five, and go to work. That's what my foundation does. We offer a couple I million dollars every year in work ethic scholarships, and your viewers are more than welcome to apply. Yeah, very cool. So uh, last question, we only have a few uh, more seconds with you, but can we expect more seasons after this premiere or is this like a one-time only thing or are we gonna keep it going? It, you, you, you can't take my word for it. I say I'm done every year. Every year I say I'm done and somehow they, they suck me back in. Viewers write in. So I, I'll do the show for as long as people are enthusiastically programming it for me or until I break. <laughs> Whichever happens first, right? Well, Mike, thank you so Whichever much. Whichever happens for, first. Exactly. Thank you for being here. Glad to have you with us, and it was great talking to you. You too, Brooke. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for Mike for joining us for that segment. Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe premieres Sunday night on Discovery Channel. And still to come, radio personality Darlene McCoy joining us with some important things that you should remember this holiday season. If you have an Amazon Alexa-enabled device in your home, ask her to enable the Fox 5 Atlanta skill so you can get local updates anytime straight from Fox 5. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7. With Good morning, I'm Brittany here at Pike Nurseries. Christmas is just a few weeks away, and if you're struggling to come up with some gift ideas for folks on your Christmas list, I've got some great ideas here for you for all the plant and garden lovers in your life. Or if you're the plant and garden lover, here's some great ideas for dropping subtle hints to your family. Uh, first up, let's talk about house plant lovers. If you've got a house plant aficionado in your life, here's some great ideas. You want to get them like a collector's 
item plant, something rare, something unique like this really beautiful Cebu Blue here. Also, all the fun, all the little things that they need to support. Potting soil, here's a moisture meter. This is really good for just taking the guesswork out of how much water to give your plants. Obviously, fertilizer to keep them looking really beautiful. And then a watering can. Not only is it functional, but it's just really pretty as well. Next up, if you're an outdoor garden lover and you're, if you've got one of those on your list, we just took a nice, really uh, great glazed ceramic pot here and just filled it with some really great stuff that'll make their life easier. Knee pads, got to protect those knees when you're in the dirt there. Gloves, protect their hands. Hand tools like, a, um, like pruners here just to make their life easier. Seed packets, these will come in really handy come February. Soil, fertilizer, uh, seed starting kits, lots of great ideas that you can put in a glazed pot for somebody who loves outdoor gardening. Next up, do you have a bird lover on your list? Here's a fun idea. So we took a cute basket, added some bird seed, bird feeders, topped it off with a cute little decorative bird. You could add a bird house as well. So lots of really cute, fun little ideas. And then lastly, we don't want to forget the kiddos as well. So here's a fun basket. We filled it with lots of toys that are just garden inspired, just to really get them interested in the great outdoors, right? So we've got a little bug catcher here, a little bird, like a butterfly net. Um, a little gardening kit so they can tag along with you while you're outside picking flowers or weeding, a magnifying glass to look at bugs, a seed starting kit, lots of fun ideas. So uh, that should help you figure out the rest of your Christmas list and get your shopping done so that you can spend some time with your family and friends and just relax and enjoy the rest of the holiday season. And on behalf of everybody here at Pike Nurseries, Merry Christmas! The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta. Entertainment News, Forbes says Prince Harry and Meghan Markle signed an estimated $100 million deal with Netflix for their Harry and Meghan docuseries. 
Per the alleged agreement, the Duke and Duchess are expected to produce documentaries, films, children's shows, and more. The multi-million dollar deal has contributed to the couple amassing their wealth, which they've rebuilt since stepping away from the British monarchy in 2020. Both Brooke and I, we did. we're actually watching it. We right are now. watching. <laughs> and another new docuseries you can watch, an investigation on Discovery is working to uncover some of the mysteries surrounding the show Glee. The Price of Glee is a three-part series focusing on the success of that show as well as its darker sides. It will dig into the deaths of three of the main actors, Naya Rivera, Corey Monteith, and Mark Salling. Here's a clip of the trailer just released. Three major cast members dead. I don't want to say the C word, the curse word, but that's where your mind goes. Fame can be poisonous. My first reaction was blame. I still feel like there's someone to blame. Interesting. That trailer features a number of Glee adjacent figures, but it's unclear if actual cast members are going to be involved in this series. The Price of Glee airs on Investigation Discovery and Dis Dis excuse me, Discovery Plus on January 16th. Oscar-nominated actor Terrence Howard is stepping away from acting, so he says. He announced his formal retirement during a red carpet event for The Best Man, the final chapters. Howard admits he doesn't want to do an impersonation of himself anymore. He made similar comments back in 2019. See what I'm saying? Claiming that he would step down from acting after the end of the Fox hit series Empire. He still has a lot of work ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, come on. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. We we'll will see what see. happens. Well, Jackie Chan plans to expand the Rush Hour franchise. Yay! Oh, the martial arts star announced that he's in talks to make a fourth movie while speaking to an audience at the Red Sea Film Festival in Saudi Arabia Thursday. Chan starred alongside Chris Tucker in the first three films. Hilarious. I haven't seen any of them. Oh my goodness, Ooh, no. no! No, should I put it on my list? Yes, you're okay. going to have to binge that okay. this weekend. All right. Well, visionary filmmaker Guillermo del Toro retells a classic inspired by his longtime passion for the story. And the musical adventure is now streaming on Netflix, and we spoke to him about his cast and all about it. Here's a look at Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio with Fox's Ashley Dvorkin. Good morning. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio debuts on Netflix with its stunning stop motion animation and dark twist on a classic tale. How much your characters and your stories become a part of you from one to the next and what you might take with you from Pinocchio that you discovered? You know, it's funny. For me, it's never been a filmography. It's always been a biography. And uh, if I do my job right as director, everybody that gets involved feels the same way and it becomes their movie too and being a son and being a father and uh, existing in a world where we are here very briefly and then we're gone and how unimportant our lives are so that makes them very important for the people around us. These are things that I ponder about as an individual, and I try to bring them to the movies I make. The cast learned from the movie-making process. What Guillermo said, he, he told me that um, I should say dummy at the end of every line. Um, and obviously it got cut out, but saying dummy at the end of a line gave me something to direct it out. They used different sized puppets. Yeah. You know, I thought that there was maybe like smaller and a little bigger, but they used like gigantic uh, figures. Del Toro shared how he feels they pushed this art form to another level to bring the characters to life. I don't think you've ever seen actors in the puppets the way we created in this film. I think the acting is very subtle, incredibly realistic emotionally and spiritually. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Looks good. We are back with our pet of the day after this.
The news moves fast, and so do you. So take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day Atlanta 24-7 with email newsletters. It's the news you want delivered right to your inbox. The Morning Brief gives you all the top stories to start your day. And the GDA Download delivers a daily recap of trending news, celeb interviews, recipes, and more. You can also get breaking news when it happens. And contest alerts to give you the best chance at winning big. All things Fox 5 right to your inbox. Sign up now at fox5atlanta.com slash email. He's believed to be a bully breed mix, but he's such a sweetheart. The one-year-old is a resilient guy, hence the name, and he's Super ready cute. for his forever home. For more information on how you can adopt a pet from the Operation Second Chance Jail Dog Program, go to their website, jaildogs.org. He's really cute. Right? Nice little smile there. He yes, he's smiling yeah, for us. He is. I love that. Well, thank you for waking up with us and joining us. Fox 5 have? News at noon. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, I think we have Fox 5 News at okay, noon. Okay, do we? I was like, wait, <laughs> do we? Yes. I think we have Alex with. She's going to be at the live desk with a look ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, good morning. We'll be on after the World Cup. Delivery notice scams are heating up as the holidays draw nearer. The Fox 5 I-Team's Dana Fowle says it's hard to tell whether it's real or not, so she has some help for you. Plus, at noon, Brittany Griner is back on U.S. soil, but what's next for her and the other U.S. citizens held abroad? Ladies. All right, lots to get to, Alex. Thank you, and thank now you for joining us <laughs> for our web edition of Good Day Atlanta. Of course, you can stay connected to Fox 5 around the clock. Like our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fox 5 Atlanta, and subscribe to our Fox 5 Atlanta YouTube channel. And again, join us again for Fox 5 News at noon. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Period. Knowing that this individual has already shown that he's violent, that he's already shot at one of our deputies, does the great uh, does a great job of keeping a safe distance. He calls for backup. He waits for that backup to arrive. Aviation's in the area, and then decides we're going to do a traffic stop uh, in a safe place to do so, to where the to where we can minimize the risk to any innocent bystander to our, to our our amazing community. He pulls into a residence right up here, just north on Bomb Riverview Road, uh, right before you get the 301. 
As they pull in, they decide to do a felony traffic stop. That's where they don't rush the vehicle. They ask this individual, again, this armed individual who's already been violent towards law enforcement, to exit the vehicle. The driver complies. Uh, he back. He comes back, and they place him in, under arrest, and that's just prior to 618. So this unravels very quickly. He also has his wife in the vehicle. They get her out, take her into custody, not knowing exactly what role she played in this. We don't believe that she's involved in this, and he's solely responsible for this. Uh, as he gets out of the car to surrender himself uh, peacefully, he kicks the empty beer can, one of the empty beer cans that's in the car. We now know that there's several empty beer cans in the car. We know that he stopped at that residence because he and his wife were picking up a buddy to go to another local bar to continue drinking, drinking there. We already know there's more beer cans, empty beer cans, uh, as I mentioned, in the car. Also some mar marijuana in the car. Um, we advise our suspect, our bad guy, this driver of his Miranda rights, and he tells our our investigator that that he got stressed out and that he let his he let his emotions get the best of him. He also, in the same token, says that he didn't realize that he was shooting at a law enforcement officer. I have to tell you, I have a hard time believing that one, as you see our big, large. Tahoe SUVs with sheriff written all the way down the side of it with decals that reflect at night. I find it hard to believe that he didn't know that he was shooting at a, one of these law enforcement officers that, that keep this community safe. So uh, at this time, he's in custody. Don't exactly know what the charges will be. He just, uh, investigator just took him back to the, back to one of our substations to do a more thorough, thorough interview with him along with our deputy to do a more thorough interview with him to find out exactly. Uh, I know we'll get some photos of the vehicle. Obviously, we're processing that at the scene, so we're not able to release that, but we'll get some, some photos, of, the photos of that. Our deputy involved was Deputy Daniel Henry. He's 33 years of age, and his date of hire is 10-23 of 2016, and his area of responsibility is he's a patrol deputy that patrols the northwest portion of our county. I have to tell you, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry that anyone, any driver, would inflict violence on another human being in our community because his emotions got the best of him over something he believed was a traffic-related incident. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that any member of our Tampa Bay community would shoot at a law enforcement officer. The same law enforcement officer that's out here protecting this community. And I have to tell you at the same time, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God that this deputy wasn't injured. And after probably a lengthy interview and a long night for this deputy, he's going to be able to go home to his family and his loved ones. What questions can I try to answer? How far was the shots fired where the car veered off and pulled over the you have to speak up. I'm so sorry. How far was the distance where the actual shot was fired to where the car stopped and pulled over? Uh, uh, well, when he shot, he was just passing. Uh, so our driver, the bad guy in the green Saturn, the driver was here, and he was simply passing the car uh, as he shot. It wouldn't have taken much for our deputy to be struck. I don't, you know, a lot of a lot of factors come into equation. Was it was a deputy traveling a little faster? So as he said, "Hey, let me pull the trigger," it, it, it shot a little behind where the deputy was located. But he was he was a, a few feet away. The the uh, the second part of your question was how how far was it when he stopped? The deputy immediately pulled over. I think he was uh, in a little bit of a crisis mode to figure out what was hit. Uh, was he hit? Was he okay? So I think to keep the community safe and make sure he was safe, he immediately pulled over. Uh, he got a good description of the tag. He got a description of the car. Got a good look at the driver and put that information out. We haven't been at the scene, but the road where this happened, is it a two-lane road, like where the, the, the suspect's car would have had to try to overtake the deputy's car in order for him to fire at the deputy? Good question. I'm not sure, but I will get you that information. Sheriff, was Swig breathalyzed after he was pulled over? Not at this point. I think uh, um, maybe later on at this time, as you can imagine, there's something much larger than, than a, a, a driver that's on our roadways impaired. 
um, with with his actions. I think he's facing some some extremely serious consequences for his actions. We just don't won't know what that is until after a complete interview with him to see exactly what his intentions were. Okay. Can you have the record as well? You you implied yes. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. He does have a record. Um, in 1999, he was arrested for domestic violence. In 2008, he has a, a, a driving under the influence. And in 2010, he was arrested for possession of, of marijuana. Can you talk a little bit about um, the road rage aspect of this, and like the incidents that you all handle here in Hillsborough County? How, how often does this happen? Too frequently. We see it too often. Uh, I think I could probably ask all of you the same question, and you guys drive this, this large county, and it probably happens to you too often. I don't know what it is that drives individuals to that point of emotion to that point of angry that they would inflict violence simply because they get upset over something they've seen or experienced on a road and most of the time it wasn't intentional it's not intentional the the roads are busy this individual was driving well below the speed limit you know so there's no doubt that the deputy was rapidly approaching him but still at a safe distance there was no reason for the brake checking the deputy still i think it in my mind, attempted to de-escalate the situation by saying, listen, obviously he's an angry driver. Let me just drive around and continue to continue to head to the house. And the firearm that was used, is it owned by the suspect? How did he get it? Is that's, that's a great question. Uh, how did he get the firearm? Is he licensed to have the firearm? Was it concealed? That certainly will come out in the investigation. Like I said, these are extremely preliminary details, but that's questions that we're going to ask. Does should, he's not a convicted felon that I can see, so he's permitted to, to be in possession of that firearm. Um, but again, was the firearm stolen? There's a lot of questions that now we need to ask and why he had a firearm. Last question. He yes. certainly won't have a firearm after this. And you mentioned that the deputy uh, or the traffic stop was a safe traffic stop. How was that kind of different considering the circumstances from what would normally be a traffic stop? Yeah, instead, the, the difference is instead of just a traffic stop where they get behind a car and stop it, there were several cars. It's, it's the way they strategically deploy at a safe distance and they don't go rush in the car, walk up to the car. They have the occupants in the car come back to them. They've already known that he's already shot at a law enforcement officer. They already know that he's a violent individual, uh, maybe an impaired and violent individual individual, whatever else he may have been experiencing uh, uh, mentally at this point. So the safe thing to do during a felony traffic stop is have everybody come back to the deputies. And, and again, that, that was done um, peacefully uh, resolved and, and again with occupants taken into custody without, without any type of uh, further incident. Thank you, Sheriff. All right, scary situation there, no doubt, uh, that played out uh, yesterday evening in Florida in the Tampa area. You're watching live now from Fox, everyone. We are going to slide away for a first uh, break here of the hour. You are seeing a Dow that uh, right now just relatively flat, just up about uh, nine points there in the green. We'll look at it all day for you right here on live now from Fox, taking that quick two-minute break. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now.
Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. We're back here for you on Live Now from Fox, taking you a uh, live look right now, right outside of uh, Fox News World Headquarters, right there at Fox Square. And you can see the beautiful uh, Christmas tree is up on this Friday, uh, setting up for an afternoon. It looks like a pleasant day there in New York on this Friday here. All right. And speaking of New York, that's exactly what we'll do is keep you in there, we'll go out to uh, the Governor Hochul's event there. Happened in the Bronx just moments ago, talking about uh, connecting communities uh, via infrastructure improvements. Let's listen right here on Live Now. Every day here at the point, and will significantly improve the lives of our neighbors in the Bronx. The Metro North service to Penn Station will save commuters significant time if they work in Manhattan and make it easier for people to visit their loved ones here as well. We are very excited to see the new opportunities for economic development that these stations will bring, particularly for the young people of our neighborhoods. And so with that, I want to introduce and welcome Governor Kathy Hochul. Uh, good morning, everyone. Boy, a lot of energy out there. Someone told me they thought it was cold today. Really? Come on. Come on. Come on. The people in the Bronx are tough, right? This is not a cold day. We can handle this. Uh, you're being from Buffalo. I have a different perspective on what cold is. But uh, great to see everybody here today. And I do feel the warm welcome, Maria, to everyone here who's part of this outstanding organization, the point that just makes people have a gathering place, a space where they feel their lives can be bettered, that their people care deeply about them, and I thank you for being the leader of this uh, incredible organization. So we have some incredible leaders here as well. I want to thank uh, Senator, but also Majority Leader. It's an important title. You, I think we get a little used to calling our Senator, Senator Schumer. I spent a little time in Washington. Majority Leader is a very big deal, and he has tremendous influence, and we are the beneficiaries of someone who knows this state like no other, who is passionate about places all across the state, but particularly here in the Bronx. And I want to thank him for being a champion of this community, but also of the infrastructure projects that are federal state partnerships, which is my polite way of saying, keep sending us the money and we'll be happy to spend it, Chuck Schumer. So thank you very much. And another partner in the Congress, Richie Torres, who we've met many, many times talking about how we can work together to help the people of his beloved district uh, have a better shot in life. And I, and I appreciate the passion you bring to your job and I uh, look forward to deepening our friendship in many years to come. Congressman Richie Torres. <laughs> we also have Vanessa Gibson. Uh, what an incredible leader she has. It's, it's hard to believe you're just coming up on a year, right? I mean, I, I feel like you've, you know, you've been, had to overcome so many challenges, and you know, we really cemented our relationship dealing with that horrific tragedy, the, the fire that occurred here uh, so early in your tenure. And I want to thank you for uh, the way you put your heart and soul into this community. Let's give another round of applause to our borough president. <laughs> I also got to know as Lieutenant Governor the former borough president, Ruben Diaz Jr. Uh, you are extraordinary. We we'll keep this guy close because uh, he has a lot of wisdom to impart to me. We have a lot of great conversations, so thank you. Also, uh, another friend not too far from here, George Latimer, the county executive of Westchester County. Thank you for being here, George. Where's George go? Oh, where George is. Let's give George a chair. Somebody give George a chair. <laughs> I don't know where he, oh, he's right. Oh, he's there. Okay, George, uh, thank you for joining us. And again, uh, our leadership from the transportation world, Jenna Lieber, uh, who his nickname is On Time Under Budget. That's what I say, On Time Under Budget. He gets it done. But uh, thank you. Thank you for, you know, there's a lot of slings and arrows out there. Um, not that I'm not familiar with that situation myself, but uh, it does make you stronger. It does make you stronger. And I want to thank you for uh, being undeterred in your quest to make sure that we deliver 
this region the world-class transportation network that they all deserve. So thank you, Jana Lieber, for uh, working so closely with us. Another person that is critically important to all this is Tony Kosha, uh, the chairman of Amtrak. Uh, to be here right here today is an important signal of his priorities, the administration's priorities, and all of our priorities to make sure that communities that have been overlooked for too long finally get justice, and that's what today is all about, that we no longer have to say that people of Bronx are relegated to a transit desert, that they have access to good paying jobs in other communities, and that's what's so exciting about this. So Tony, thank you for your friendship and your partnership as well. And Kathy Rinaldi, uh, the interim president of the Metro North LA, or I want to thank her for being uh, at all these events with us, but it's not just events, it's the work that's done every single day, day in and day out, and I want to thank you and all your teams, uh, all the teams are involved here as well. So. I'm excited to be here, can you tell? Uh, this, is a, this is an infrastructure project that goes back at least four governors. Uh, people have been talking about this for over 30 years. And most of you look too young to remember all this, but uh, it's been a long time and a long time coming. A lot of people have lived here, been raised here, died here, and never had a chance to really understand what true freedom is all about freedom to be able to have access to transportation without having most of your life confined to walking and taking a bus and taking another, tra another train and trying to figure out a way to get to the jobs that are there. All it took was a simple linkage that was missing for so long. And so uh, we've been talking about this a long time, but today things are happening. And projects like this really do have an impact on people's lives very profoundly, very profoundly. And to me, infrastructure is all about connections. That's why since I became governor a short time ago, um, it's all I talk about. Because I've seen communities that have been severed by infrastructure projects from the 1950s and 60s when they thought the way to you know, deal with a place like Buffalo and Syracuse and Rochester and uh, the Cross Bronx Expressway. You create a barrier, you, put an artery, you sever the artery that goes through the heart of a community. And we're going to continue working to heal the wounds that were created from that. And that is what we're talking about uh, overall in our infrastructure philosophy and creating connections. People can get to their jobs, their schools, their families, their loved ones easier. And getting from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. Because time spent commuting is time you're not doing what you really want to do. Because I don't know if there's a single person out there who says, I look forward to being in my long commute every day. Now, maybe you got a lot of kids at home and it's your escape at your quiet time, you might have a different philosophy on that. Yeah, let's have a little longer commute. Let me, let me delay my trip home. But I'm going to guess that most people want to be with their families and their friends and uh, get to their jobs as soon as possible. So, you know, two hours and 40 minutes a day commuting, I bet everybody here can think of other things you could do with two hours and 40 minutes. I mean, you can get in great shape, you can work out every day, you can uh, explore local restaurants and take the kids to the park in a stroller. I mean, there's so many things to do. Uh, and that's what's important to me. It's all about quality of life. And if we can use something that sounds as cold and detached as infrastructure to make people's lives better, that's when I get excited. And that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, we are talking about making access available to a community that I love. I've come to love the Bronx because maybe it does have something to do with coming from a place called Buffalo where people kind of look down on you a lot and underestimate you and you get a little chip on your shoulder. You've got to be tougher than the rest to prove you've got what it takes. And I felt that connection to the Bronx since I started coming here almost a decade ago with great regularity. And so this is an extraordinary place. It's a place that people have no idea how charming the downtown art areas are, the, the businesses, uh, walking the streets, going to Orchard Beach, going to City Island, going to all the extraordinary places we have here. You know, the universities, the community colleges, the parks, the botanical gardens. A couple of weeks ago I had a few hours and my husband and I just went up to the botanical gardens here in the Bronx. And it was spiritually uplifting. And we have that right here. And I'm going to continue talking about this because this is a borough, a community that truly matters. But people in the past have not made decisions that made them feel that way here in the Bronx. And that's what we're rectifying here today. So we're talking about a way to enhance economic development around our transit hubs when we build these. We're going to be able to have more businesses, more life, more connection, little coffee shops, little dry clean. These are all going to step up there. So we're going to have a one seat ride directly into Penn Station, one seat ride to Penn Station. This is going to be life changing for people. And that's what I'm excited about. And conversely, 
But you want to go to Westchester, right, County Executive? Why wouldn't you want to go up to Westchester, see family, friends, connections, and bring people from Westchester? And so this is a whole connection, which is going to be extraordinary. And if you really want to go to Connecticut, you can as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, but this transit desert in East Bronx is going to be gone. Over half a million Bronx residents uh, will, live, will live within one mile, one mile of one of these new stations. Co-op City, I was just there a few weeks ago, Morris Park, Parkchester, Van Ness and Hunts Point, all these communities are going to be transformed in a matter of a few years. And that's what this is all about. And I also want to talk about where people live because we're making these areas more attractive. When you have this kind of trend, look how beautiful that looks. Uh, this is going to be stunning. And it's what the people of these communities deserve. But where are people going to live? If you want to be here, they're going to want to come here. But if you can't find a house, you can't afford a house, now it doesn't work. And so I want to take a second to commend Mayor Adams for his announcements on housing yesterday and talk about transit-oriented development. What does that mean? It means if you're going to build stations like this, why do people have to walk 20, 25 minutes to get to that station? Let's build housing right there as well. So zonings will take place, rezonings will take place that say, yes, now that we have this anchor, you have this access, people are going to want to live there. So let's open it up for affordable housing, market rate housing. Let's change the whole community. This is a once in a generational opportunity. And that's what we're doing. So that's what this is about. We're going to save time, at least 50 minutes in each direction. That's two hours a day. Uh, heading out to Westchester, saving 70 minutes and also promoting. This will give an opportunity for people who want to be educated here. Come to our community colleges. Come to our colleges. Come on up here. Uh, explore many areas that we have not been able to access quite as easily. But also, access to good paying jobs. Let's think about that. In Manhattan, the average weekly wage is about $4,000. $211,000 a year. Manhattan jobs. That's nice. Now, if you're trapped in areas, let's say the Bronx, because it just doesn't make sense for you to commute hours a day. The average wage is 61000 Now, if you can get on a one-seat ride to Penn Station, all of a sudden a job that pays 211000 or in that range is available to you, think about what that does to your family as well. So it opens up your access from this community to good-paying jobs in other places. And the governor there uh, talking about uh, new ways uh, to connect communities uh, there and uh, really updating their transit system, especially in the Bronx. We're going to take another quick two minute break here on Live Now from Fox. Stay right here with us. More to come. Also good for the environment. Fewer cars, fewer cars on the road. We're going to have 80,000 fewer vehicle miles. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. You and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you.
Get news from Fox 5 and Good Day. Outstanding leadership there. And I want to thank everybody for filling this room up. It's great. It's a beautiful morning. And before I get into um, our subject at hand, uh, we are here in Hunts Point. And since we're in the neighborhood, I just wanted to mention that Congre your great Congressman Richie Torres and I just secured $110 million federal dollars uh, for the modernization of the Hunt Point produce market. So essential. <laughs> This is essential for the food supply of all of the New York metropolitan area, but one of the beautiful things about it, three quarters of the workers there live south of the Cross Bronx Expressway. These are community people benefiting from this great project. Um, it's, and guess what? All of the jobs are union. So they're good paying jobs as well. Um, so it's a great thing for Hunts Point, and it was long overdue that we build up the Hunt Point market to the 21st century standards. And with the only grant from DOT's infra, infra program, the whole program nationally is a billion dollars. We got 110 million of it. It's good to be the majority leader. Um, uh, Hunt Point will now have a great opportunity. Now on to the subject today, Penn Station access. It means two big things. One. The East Bronx will no longer be a transit desert, finally. And second, people from the Bronx and Westchester will be able to go directly to Penn Station. We had it all, you know, the original plans, if you're from Long Island, you could only go to Penn Station and not Grand Central. If you're from Westchester in the Bronx, you could only go to Grand Central, not Penn Station. But with East Side Access, something I've worked long and hard on, and this great project, we straighten that mess out. And wherever you live in the metropolitan area, you can go to either station. And that's a huge thing for our transit. First, I want to thank everyone who worked so hard with me on this project. Of course, our great governor, Kathy Hochul, our outstanding rising star. Well, he's a star already. He's not rising anymore. Richie Torres represents this district. Uh, Congressman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who represents, well, we don't have the map up there. I told Richie, one of the things about being governor that's better than senator, I'd rather be senator, they can make all those nice charts and pictures and have the people to do that. Well, these beautiful, but she represents the, port, the two northern stations there. Our great MTA CEO, Jano Lieber, who has really done a professional, great job at the MTA. No more politics, no more bull, getting it done. Our wonderful Nobody Fights Harder for the Bronx. Anytime I go to the Bronx, and that's a lot, she's always there and always delivering and always doing good things. Our great, great borough president, Vanessa Gibson. And I might add, following in the footsteps of our great, great former borough president, who's here because he cares so much and started out on all this and worked with me on this project, Ruben Diaz, Jr. This is a metropolitan area project. A whole lot of East Westchester, of the eastern half of Westchester County is affected. And George Latimer is somewhere around here. I don't know where he is, our county executive. Thank you, he does a great job there. And we have our local officials who have really helped. Senator Luis Sepulveda is here. Uh, Sepulveda is here. And three of our wonderful council members, Rafael Salamanca, Amanda Farias, and Marjorie Velasquez. And this project's so big, it covers all of their districts, even though they're all over the Bronx, these three districts. So that's a great thing. Now, today's been a long time in coming, a very long time in coming. I remember holding a press conference, sometimes I do those things, um, back in January 2019, outside Co-op City, where they were desperate for good transit. And the focus was getting Amtrak and the MTA to play nice on the details of sharing access to the Hell's Gate line and to the Pelham Bay Bridge, and also who was going to put in what amount of money. So thankfully, I was able to bring the MTA and Amtrak together. We hashed out the details and overcame this huge hurdle which had stood in the way of making this project occur. Tony Koch is nodding his head. I said, I get Amtrak a lot of money. Let's have some of it for this project. And Geno, same thing with the MTA. And so uh, we got that done to arrive at this day. 
the groundbreaking of the Park Chester train station, one of the four new Metro North stations on that beautiful, can we put that, even though I'm a senator, can we put that up? <laughs> Let's put that nice picture of all those nice stations up. Um, uh, the one seat train ride for the South Bronx and parts of Westchester to Penn Station and the west side of Manhattan. This means a lot of things, as the governor outlined. Reduced travel time, greater job opportunities, and a more resilient and interconnected regional rail network. So why is this important? Tra there's a big equation that's not up on this chart. <laughs> you see, if you're not the governor, they don't listen to you. Hey, you guys, put up the chart. <laughs> anyway, it's a Friday, we're having some fun, you know. We elected, we elected a great man in Georgia, so we're still on cloud nine. Re-elected. Um, uh, anyway, um, transit development equals community development. Transit development equals community development. And as we continue to rebuild our economy coming out of the pandemic, we should do everything we can to make sure it's an equitable recovery. It affects all parts of New York, not just certain privileged parts of New York. That means prioritizing the outer boroughs and communities like the South Bronx that have been neglected for far too long. That's what Penn Station Access is all about. And now we have an interagency consensus and just as important, the resources to get the job done. All the consensus in the world won't do you much good unless you have the cash. And I was proud to lead the effort and write and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill in the Senate last year, over a trillion dollars of much needed infrastructure, more than we have done in decades and decades and decades. That legislation de delivered tens of billions of dollars in transit funding to New York. As majority leader, I have some say in writing these formulas, and you can be sure the formulas are favorable to us. There are lots of places that don't understand that we have the bulk. There it is. Thank you, Governor. I love maps. When I was a little boy, my father, he would get home from his little exterminating business at uh, 7.30 at night, and we had already, um, my mom had fed us dinner, and he would, we had a map on our wall. My brother and I shared a room and we had a map on the wall and he would come teach us about things. So I've always loved maps because I associate that with my father. He also, by the way, when he came home, he smelled, my, he smelled of all those chemicals. My sister once sent him a Father's Day card. You know, he passed away a year ago, so he's always on my mind. He sent her, she, she sent him a Father's Day card. Dad, we're the only family that associates the smell of DDT with love. <laughs> In any case, Thank you for the map. Um, I digress. Uh, so the legislation, as I said, provides tens of billions to New York and tens of billions to Amtrak, which has also been a passion of mine. The money is going to fund the lion's share of this Penn Station access. These federal dollars that you read about last year are now producing real results. Of the $3.2 billion in the project, Amtrak, thank you, Tony Kosha, Amtrak is contributing $500 million, and New York State and the MTA are applying for $2.1 billion from the Federal Railroad Administration's Fed State Partnership. And I have some good news on that last point. It's not only allocating, the, uh, legislating and passing the dollars, but it's then making sure the agencies get the money out there. So the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration, recently signaled that Penn Station access would be a, would be a strong candidate for the state, Fed State Partnership Program. And they listed, here's how they intend to give out the money, $1.3 billion in their federal, this is just from fiscal year 23's inventory, and the rest will be done in future years. That's a lot of money. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on them. I watch them like a hawk to make sure they deliver on that allocation, for this is a no-brainer project. We're gonna make sure they commit more money moving forward each year to reach the maximum possible federal share for this project, relieving the burden from New York taxpayers, city and state. And that's what happens when we have all the levels of government, you've heard the many people who are here today, uh, aligned on a project that is so strong on the merits. And as I said, with the arrival of the East Side Access, which is sort of the mirror image, 
connecting Long Island to Grand Central Station, just as we're collecting, connecting the Bronx and Westchester to Penn Station. And when those are completed, um, uh, with the east side access and the rehab of the East River Tunnels, which has, as the governor mentioned, been a long time in coming, I fought, which I also got federal dollars for, um, we're going to have this money. Plus, more good news, the next phase of the Second Avenue subway extension into Harlem, East Harlem, another underserved area, another desert in terms of transit is going to happen as well. Uh, through funding in the federal CIG program. And then, of course, something that's been a passion of mine, where the governor has been so cooperative, is Gateway, which will be the largest public works project in the country, employing tens and tens of thousands of workers, good jobs, union jobs, as we make sure that those tunnels under the Hudson River are still viable, because we know what would happen if they collapsed. Here's the bottom line, folks. Because of what we were able to do, having a majority Democrat Senate, House, and President, we've really infused money into public transit that we have never had before. And New York is building the next generation of our public transit system that is going to help keep our city growing, keep attracting new people, keep attracting new businesses, keep, keep pulsing with the energy that makes New York City this special place that we love so much. So when people say, well, what does Washington and all that have to do with me? A lot. But our job, and why we're here today, is making sure all those dollars come here and actually employ people to build the stuff and then make people's lives a lot better uh, once the stuff is completed. So I'm proud to be here, glad to be here, apologize. I'm on my way to Putnam County. You know I visit every county every year. It's getting close to the end of the year. I have three left. <laughs> One of which is Putnam County, so I'm on my way there. Thank you, everybody. It's a great morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium, Congress Member Richie Torres. Well, I have an easier job than the majority leader. I only have one county to visit. Uh, and Governor, welcome to the greatest county. I know you have 62, but we're number one in the Bronx. You know, when people tell me, when someone tells me, oh, I'm from Queens, I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from Manhattan, I say, well, no one's perfect. Not everyone can be from the Bronx, but, uh, but it's an honor to be here. And you know, this is an amazing opportunity because for 100 years, the Hellgate line has actually cut through the Bronx without actually servicing the people of the Bronx. It has stood as a symbol of transit inequity. And so we have a historic opportunity to rectify a transit injustice that has been perpetrated against the people of the Bronx for more than half a century. Um, the Bronx, which historically has been overlooked, will be overlooked no longer, thanks to the leadership of our governor. And, the and that was the event there from New York. We're gonna take another quick two minute break. When we come back, we'll take you out to Florida, where uh, officials, state officials there talking about uh, a child safety initiative. We'll bring it to you right here on the other side of the break on Live Now. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now.
get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. and making it accessible uh, to all of us who have kids and even us adults, uh, I jumped at the opportunity to do it. So I want to thank our Buccaneer partners uh, here for being our, par being our partner uh, in this mission and doing this. And uh, with no further ado, I'd like to bring Ken Hasmeyer, the Executive Director of the National Ch Child ID Program here. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for inviting us to your second home. <laughs> I will say that uh, I'm Kenny Hansmeyer. I'm the Executive Director of the National Child ID Program and uh, very honored uh, to be here. Uh, we've got, uh, we have our fingerprints uh, in Florida uh, through the years. I want to go back a little bit in, in history to uh, explain how we've, how we've gotten here today. Uh, in 1997, Amber Hagerman was taken in Arlington, Texas and Amber's mother struggled to find DNA and fingerprint information and took law enforcement uh, five to six days to fingerprint toys, pull hair out of hairbrushes uh, to try to find biometric information. Great things come out of tragedy. This is one of those programs. Uh, and of course the Amber Alert. And so what happened was the American Football Coaches Association, the Association for All NFL and College Coaches, uh, saw the need to come uh, to create an in-home fingerprinting kit that we could give out to our fans. And so in 1997, 98 Division I universities participated uh, in handing ID kits out to their fans. And again, we, like I said, we have our fingerprints in Florida. The very first Division I game that we did that year was the Miami-West Virginia game, and 27,000 fans got ID kits so they could take home, fill out, keep back in, in, in a safe place in their home in case of an emergency. This does not go into a database. This is a gift of safety. Uh, the next year we had 554 all division universities participate. Uh, we broke our record. I think we did 3.7 million children that year. 28 NFL teams uh, participated uh, that year also. Uh, to date, we're the world's largest child ID program. 81 million ID kits have gone out. Uh, and again, I want to come back to the great state of Florida. Bobby Bowden, very competitive, uh, was on the board of directors when we started the program. He goes, Kenny, I'll be your quarterback coach, uh, and I will tell you that uh, Coach is in heaven today with Coach Snellenberger. Both supported this program mightily, and I guarantee he's smiling from ear to ear uh, for what uh, A.G. Moody is picking up the ball, moving this forward uh, after five years of, of not being in the great state of Florida. Uh, I guarantee you that Coach, even though you're a Gator, <laughs> he's, uh, he's very, very happy, and, and uh, I will tell you this, this is how competitive Coach was with this program. When we did our first year, the 97 Division I stadiums, uh, we had to give a board report. And so we gave a board report. Coach Bowden, of course, was on that board, and he said, Kenny, I want to talk to you. Are these numbers correct? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, I'm going to talk to you after the meeting, and Coach was upset. And he said, uh, he goes, Kenny, are these numbers uh, correct? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, the numbers of the 97. He said, that, uh, he said, the young man down the road beat me. And I said, coach, I still don't understand. He said, it looks like that I only handed 15,000 ID kits out at Florida State, and Spurrier handed out 25,000. And I said, yes, sir, he beat you in your child ID program. And he said, that'll never happen again. Whatever Spurrier does, you put me down 5,000 more children. <laughs> so they were competing even in child ID to help protect children. So again, this is an in-home fingerprinting kit. We're here to announce that uh, through a grant with Florida Power and Light, uh, they have taken care of every kindergarten child in the, in the great state of Florida. And I'll also tell you, I'm, I'm kind of biased to you can tell I've got a southern accent. I'm kind of biased to Texas. Uh, we think we do everything bigger and better in Texas. I want to make sure that everybody in here knows. I may have to take my driver's license in Texas. They may kick me out. But Florida does it right in everything that you do. You have 67 county sheriffs. You have 67 school districts. Uh, you have great leadership uh, in, this, in this state, bar none. 
And uh, I will tell you that Ashley Moody uh, and your governor, bar none, are leading uh, the fight in this country, not only on child safety and human trafficking, uh, but on opioids. Y'all do it right here, and you need to be very, very proud. God bless you. Uh, we're excited. And you're going, some of the questions may be, well, what about the rest of our children? There's over 500,000 children reported missing every year. Uh, most of those are runaways. I was telling Ms. Glazer uh, about that. Uh, right now we're going to do our kindergarten children. Next year what we hope to, to uh, achieve, and we talked a little bit about that, almost uh, 1.8 million ID kits going out to all kindergarten through 12th graders because, again, our runaways fall into uh, our junior high and high schools, and we want to make sure that a parent has something to turn over in case of an emergency. This is a gift of safety uh, from the AG's office. It does not go into a database. We hope to God it's never used. But if they ever need to turn it over to law enforcement, we want them to have it. I have two daughters that are four and six. Uh, they, we did the ID kit when they were four and six. They're now, now today 24 and 26. Both of their ID kits are still in my Bible today. I thank God I never had to use them. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to the Florida Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Thank you. Thank you so well, today is a great day, a great announcement. I thank the Buccaneers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, my home county team, uh, I think America's team, but you know I'm a little biased, <laughs> for hosting us here today. They are not only focused every week on making sure they have players that are leading on the gridiron, but they have always encouraged, supported players that go on to lead outside of the stadium. There is no better example of that than this man right here, Derek Brooks, who was not only a hero on the field to so many of us who watched him lead our team to greatness, but remains to be a hero in the lives of those in the Tampa Bay area and improving the lives of children in need and making sure that at everyone in our community has an opportunity for greatness. And we're so grateful to you. Thank you. And we have so many great partners with me today to announce that every single kindergartner in Florida will now take home with them a child ID kit in which their parents can obtain crucial identification information from physical characteristics, including a photograph, fingerprints, and even DNA, which parents may take and store within their home and keep among their most precious, important belongings and documents, that if tragedy should ever strike and a child go missing, that they have access to that information in a timely way that can be helpful to law enforcement. Many of you know that I am the Attorney General of Florida, but I am also the mother of a school-aged child. I'm also the wife of a law enforcement officer, so you can imagine we have had conversations in our household about how we would be prepared in case of emergency. From a, a meeting place uh, to how we would provide information and work with law enforcement. And through this project, now every parent can have those discussions and make a plan on how to be prepared. Uh, the idea for any parent, myself included, uh, that a child may go missing uh, is unthinkable, unfathomable. But it's, it's something that, that happens in our society, in this nation, and we want parents to be prepared, and we want our children to be protected. According to the National Child Identification Program, more than 800,000 children in America go missing each year. That's one every 40 seconds nationwide. And when this happens, one of the most important factors in reuniting a missing child with the family is being able to identify quickly that child. Law enforcement will need to know what the child looks like, their height, weight, hair color, important characteristics. And they've got to have that information and work with those parents immediately. It's a nightmare scenario. And one I hope none of our parents in Florida ever have to confront. But this phenomenal team standing with me today will make this process of collecting and storing identification of their children for parents much easier. And I'm proud to stand uh, with all of them as we announce that every single child in kindergarten in the state of Florida, whether you're in a public, private, or charter school, 
will be sent home with a child ID kit. And remember, and I want to make clear, this is a child ID kit to collect information that will be kept with the parents and the safety of their home. This is not something that will be stored with any entity or any government entity. It's for the parents to lose should the unthinkable happen. In an urgent situation, these kits will help law enforcement quickly find children. So following today's announcement, approximately 250,000 kits will be provided to Florida schools and be sent home free to all parents. We thank Florida Power and Light for making this possible and partnering with our agencies to um, accomplish this important mission. And I'm proud that uh, we have also worked with the Florida Department of Education, the Florida Sheriffs, uh, the Florida School Superintendents, Florida School Resource Officers, along with the American Football Coaches and the National Child ID Program to make this project a success. The parents that will be receiving these kits, uh, please review them. I would like to say uh, I could do this quickly, even had I not helped work with this program and prepare this program. Getting this in my kid's backpack when it, when it falls out of the backpack, and you know what that means when you're entering the backpack at the end of the day and everything falls out, this can be completed quickly with your child and stored with their important documents. I am so grateful that we live in a state with, with, law and, with the best men and women that wear a badge and serve Floridians. This will help them do their jobs. This will help them help families should the unthinkable happen. So we thank all of our partners, Florida Power and Light, for making this project possible today. And again, we thank the Buccaneers for allowing us to come here and announce this important initiative. We'll call up now the president of the Florida Sheriff's Association, Al Nienhuis. Um, again, I'm Hernando County Sheriff Al Nienhuis, and I'm um, this year's president of the Florida Sheriff's Association. And uh, I think I can uh, definitely speak on behalf of my uh, peer sheriffs here in the state of Florida, and even go out on a limb and speak for all law enforcement in the state of Florida. We certainly appreciate uh, the individuals that have already been mentioned here. Derek Brooks, obviously, thank you for uh, your support of this, and and uh, the Buccaneers organization. Um, you know, we we certainly have a great community and uh, all of us working together uh, not the least of which are our sports teams particularly the NFL and the Bucks uh, is a, a huge asset to law enforcement we know you've always been supportive of law enforcement and we appreciate that um, the national ID uh, uh, kit uh, the executive director uh, Kenny and I were talking uh, before we came on this morning or this yeah this morning and um, he happened to mention he's been doing this for 25 years what a labor of love so thank you for your uh, dedication to this program uh, Florida sheriffs, I, I want to give you a little perspective. The, the general spoke on it a little bit, but um, when the unthinkable happens, and unfortunately in law enforcement, we tend to get a jaded view. We deal with the unthinkable just about every single day. Um, and uh, that's what we get paid to do, is we deal with this stuff so most people don't have to think about it. But if you put yourselves in the shoes of a parent for just a moment and we respond to their house, um, even though stranger abductions are extremely rare they do happen and uh, that is the worst case scenario and when something like that happens uh, the parents are certainly not in their right mind I know I would not be if that happened to my child and uh, everything is a chore so being able to get some of this stuff done uh, when you are thinking clearly and something that takes just a couple minutes and I was looking at the most updated kits there They're much easier to use than the original ones. They're not there's no mess No fuss you can fill it out in a few minutes and as the general said and was said earlier This is something the parent keeps law enforcement doesn't get it to put in some database or anything It is for the parent uh, if and only if that child goes missing and we're asking questions uh, of the parent that they're not going to be able to process for some time and when something like this happens whether it is a runaway or the worst case scenario a child abduction uh, time is of the essence uh, literally minutes 
can make the difference between success and failure. And every time we have to put a law enforcement officer towards a resource, uh, no matter how mundane, it takes them away from doing knocking on doors or doing anything else they can do. So trying to go get fingerprints or DNA uh, when something like this is happening is obviously not the best alternative. So having that ID kit filled out that a parent can just hand to the first responding law enforcement officer certainly gets many things off our checklist almost immediately. Uh, so we appreciate the supporters of this and again law enforcement. Uh, it cannot be overstated how much we appreciate this kit uh, if the unthinkable were to happen. And again, very rare, but it could happen. And of course, runaways, the same thing. Uh, much more frequent, and most of those come home safely, but unfortunately, uh, sometimes they do not. So uh, we do need to be prepared for that. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it, uh, the mic over to our uh, local Hillsborough County uh, Superintendent of Schools, Addison Davis. Mr. Davis. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Chair. One thing we understand is clear that we cannot do this in isolation. It takes a collaboration. And I want to thank Derek and also Ashley and this entire team that stands in front of you today to be able to signify that safety is and will remain the greatest priority. As we, you know, as a collective unit, as community leaders, as civic leaders, we have to do everything that we can in an effort to help parents strengthen their knowledge and their comfort level related to safety. And this initiative does just that. You know, as a parent, Natalie and I, you know, as a, as a father and my wife and I, Natalie, we used this many years ago for both of our daughters. And we know that as little ones, they loved whether we went to amusement parks, whether we went to events, birthday parties, uh, attended uh, you know, a number of uh, activities that our two daughters were curious and they would they would wander away a little bit. So, you know, this give us, we use this identification kit to take with us just in case an undesired situation we were faced with. But I will tell you this, you know, this is part of a comprehensive plan to ensure that safety is in the forefront of everything that we do along the way. And we are so grateful for this initiative. And this is only a part of a, a bigger plan to really make certain that all of our parents have an opportunity to create systematic approach for comfort within their households and their community. One thing we have to understand that law enforcement needs every opportunity to accelerate bringing our little ones back to us as often and quick as they can. And the identification card allows that process to take place. We're so thankful in Hillsborough County that 18,000 kindergarten students will be receiving this identification card in the next few weeks. And we hope our parents take advantage of this and host us in a safe place to create that psychological momentum to allow us to have safety in the forefront. We thank this community for this bold initiative, and we look forward to being partners as every superintendent in the state of Florida and FADS stands united to make certain that this information gets in the hands of our parents to protect our most important assets, which are our students. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for this important announcement, helping us educate those parents who will soon be receiving this home in a backpack and wondering what do we do with this and know how important it is. Uh, and then you take this very seriously, complete this and store this in your home. And we'd be happy to take any questions that you may have at this time. Uh, Miguel from Channel 10 here, congratulations on your partnership. When do you expect those kits to start arriving in schools? I've, you can you can answer that yes, very the, soon. The uh, what's uh, again, y'all uh, y'all had a tough break down here. Y'all had a couple of hurricanes come in, uh, had election in the middle of that, and y'all did a great job. Uh, that's why y'all lead. I will tell you that even in Lee County. Uh, Lee County just got their ID kits. The ID kits have been uh, are out in every county, out in every school district waiting to go out. Uh, some of them have already gotten it out. But I will tell you that every county in the, in the great state of Florida has their kits. Penny and Attorney General, you talked about how you hope this also sparks conversations with parents and their kids about safety. Aside from these kids, what kind of information or messaging would you like those parents to maybe stress with their kids? Well, as a mom, I can tell you uh, 
what I talk to my child about, and that is to be very cautious of those individuals that they do not know and they haven't been introduced to by their families or, or teachers. Uh, I also am, am very guarded uh, about my child with his online, online communications. Uh, do not have online friends that aren't your real life friend, are, are what we say. Uh, as we know, and I can tell you from my work in human trafficking, uh, many times uh, the online sites Games to social media are often ways that folks we wouldn't want communicating with our children are able to contact them and communicate with them. So parents, uh, it's no longer just who your child will engage with in the real world. Uh, walking home for school, from school or uh, in other situations, you now have to be increasingly guarded with online activities. So one of my favorite go-tos is please do not speak with or be friends with anyone online who you're not friends with in real life. Again, uh, Florida leads in providing warnings to parents, uh, to Floridians on how they can protect themselves. We'll continue to do that. Uh, certainly, I was just sharing this with another mother of three prior to this event and was saying, uh, coming into this as a mother of a young child into this role as Attorney General, it's made me acutely aware of how we can do better and being more vocal in offering advice to parents and Floridians on how to protect their families and children. And Attorney General, do you plan to expand these kits to kids maybe older in the future? Is that in the works? That is done in, in many areas and has been done in the past. Uh, we're working hard to make sure that we, we have the opportunity to expand this program. Uh, today is the announcement of, of hitting the youngest children. If we can hit the kindergartner children, we know that they'll keep those with them as they grow uh, through high school. But certainly it's always uh, our intention and our desire to try and do more as we're allocated resources. For parents out there who uh, maybe want to take extra steps outside of just filling out this identification, uh, I know you kind of alluded to maybe limiting who they speak to on online spaces, but there's any extra steps that parents can do to be even more, I don't know, prepared or, or ready for if, if an unfortunate incident were to happen? Thank you, and yes, this is a great first step, making sure you have the identification of your children and that information on hand to be able to quickly provide that to law enforcement. I would also advise parents, you can go to myfloridalegal.com. Uh, we have suggestions to parents on how they can uh, safeguard their children's activity online. We even have um, some information about commonly used apps and games uh, that parents might want to be aware of. Uh, I know that you uh, see in the news every day uh, on certain apps that, that may be security concerns, not only to our national security, but to your to your children and, and their, their safety, their online security. So I would encourage folks if they have more questions on how they can better protect their online safety of their children, go to myfloridalegal.com. And again, have the conversations with your children. There's never a great time, uh, but pick a time where your family is together. And again, reiterate with them, uh, don't talk to strangers that you haven't been introduced to. Uh, make sure that they are people, if they approach you, that you have been introduced introduced to by your family or your teachers, uh, so important. And as a parent, we, we've had those conversations and I'm always encouraging other Florida families to do the same. I will turn it over uh, to Kenny Hansmeyer to see if there's any other information. In terms of um, if the kindergarten families don't get it through this particular initiative, I believe there's a way to go online and yes, get, get this identification in another route. Yes, we, I mean, you can always go online, but it is uh, our hope. Uh, we work with uh, corporate partners uh, in the state to be able to uh, expand the program kindergarten. And now this kindergarten class will go to, to first grade next year. So it's the thought is that we would get in the fall uh, to be able to promote it more in the fall. Kindergarten, uh, skip first grade because they've already got it, but then try to maybe do uh, all of elementary. But we will grow that program uh, and to make sure that hopefully every child, every parent has a, an ID kit in case of an emergency. And where can they go online to get the kit? Uh, you can go to childidprogram.com if you need to order uh, an ID kit for your child your children, your grandchildren. And Ms. Glazer, I've, I've, uh, I've, again, we'll have some other questions, but I want to tell you thank you so much uh, for hosting us in your home. It may be
as Florida officials as well as the Florida Attorney General coming together to talk about that new child safety program. And uh, we continue to bring you live feeds across the country. We are looking forward to this one in Arizona. This is at a food bank uh, featuring Senator Cinema. But uh, the big news really with Cinema here is uh, that she has switched her party affiliation from Democrat to independent there. So that'll be a lot of the questions that she will be uh, taking at this media availability. As soon as that gets going, of course, we'll bring it to you right here on Live Now from Fox. Everyone, we are going to slide away for a quick two-minute break as you're looking at the Dow here. Just a flat day, uh, just about 15 points in the green. We'll continue to take a look at it for you here on Live Now from Fox. And if that Senator Cinema event uh, doesn't uh, start going on the other side of the break we'll take you out to the white house where there is a white house COVID summit going on The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Back here for you on Live Now from Fox, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here, as always, as we bring you top stories and headlines from across the country. I'm your host, Mike Page. Always great here to be with you. We are awaiting uh, immediate availability with Senator Cinema in Arizona this morning. As soon as that happens, we'll bring it to you here on Live Now from Fox. This is all coming as uh, the Democratic senator says she is switching to independent there and uh, causing some strain for Democrats across the country. So we will listen to her remarks here at this food bank event that uh, she is hosting. We'll bring it to you as soon as it gets going right here on Live Now from Fox. But I want to go out to the White House for a uh, COVID-19 summit. This may be the last time that we see Dr. Fauci in a uh, federal set, uh, setting because he is retiring at the end of uh, the year here. Let's listen right here on Live Now from Fox. So that's why we need an update, uh, updated vaccine because it targets the virus that's out there. The second issue is that immunity can wane over time. This is why people need an annual flu shot because the virus changes and your immunity changes. Well, in the same way as we've seen waning immunity against COVID, getting that updated bivalent vaccine is the single most important thing you can do to make sure immunity is up to date and that you can fight the virus that's out there. Dr. Fauci, do you want to add anything yeah, to that? Yeah, and just to underscore the important point, a lot of people ask us, well, you know, I got measles vaccine, I got polio vaccine, I never had to get another vaccine of the same type. Why do we need to do that? And it's just exactly what Dr. Jaws said. Other vaccines of the other types 
give you immunity that's lasting in decades and sometimes a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's not the case with COVID. So we've got to keep up with that virus and keep up with the waning immunity. When we do that, we're going to wind up being safe. That's the reason why you need your updated COVID booster. So, Dr. Fauci, I'll go back to, uh, to you with one of our first questions from our members who says, I got boosted, but I still got COVID. How is another shot going to help me from getting COVID again? Well, that's a great question. It relates to the prior question. Even if you've gotten COVID and you've gotten vaccinated, again, the immunity that protects you against the possibility of getting infected three, four, five months later mean you've got to keep your body defenses up to date. When you do that, you dramatically diminish the possibility of getting infected and also importantly, dramatically diminish the, po the possibility that you're going to get seriously ill requiring hospitalization. And if you got the COVID, how soon after you've had COVID should you get another booster shot? It's a great question, Joanne, and um, great question to whoever asked. All right, we will go back to this in a little bit here, but I do want to go out to Arizona. We do have Senator Cinema addressing the media here after making the decision to switch to the independent. Let's listen. At the United Food Bank out in Mesa, you know, folks have heard me talk about this over and over again, but as a kid who was hungry sometimes, I think it's incredibly important to make sure that we're thinking about others, families who might be struggling, particularly during this holiday season. So I know you want to ask about politics, but I want to give a I want to give a plug for the United Food Bank, and I'd encourage folks to go online to unitedfoodbank.org and make a contribution of cash or volunteer, or even donate some food to help families during this holiday season. Gotcha. All right, let's go with the Univision. Uh, so let's go to uh, Title 42, expanding the Title 42, and uh, uh, you're proposing sort of uh, sort of like something to legalize all the dreamers out there. Can you talk about that and just what, sure. is that, what, what would that mean for all the dreamers you know, who are here illegally? Well, the immigration crisis is always top of mind for Arizonans. We live every day with the administration's failure to solve this crisis. So I'm working right now with my colleague Tom Tillis of North Carolina on a proposal that would both protect and secure our border and provide a path to citizenship to over two million dreamers. We all know who dreamers are in Arizona. These are kids who are brought here through no fault of their own, are American in everything but paperwork, and deserve to have the right to be American citizens. Now, I was really proud that Arizona voters just a few weeks ago said that dreamers could now get in-state tuition at college. But I want to make sure that when they finish school, they can get jobs, build families, and live the American dream, just like we have. So Arizonans can expect me to keep working on this challenge. I know it's a tough one, but we're working to break through the partisan gridlock and get something done. 12 minutes. You uh, started a, a water council to address water issues. Where do you stand on progress and what's the big next step in Congress? Well, I'm so glad you've asked that question because in Arizona we're facing the reality of a federal government's failure to address this drought. That's why I fought so hard this summer to ensure that the climate package we passed through the Senate included four billion dollars of drought funding for Arizona and other southwestern states. And in fact, later this morning, I'll be meeting with the International, the Intertribal Council of Arizona, talking specifically about the water crisis in Arizona and how we all have to work together to solve this challenge. Folks can count on me to keep pounding the drum in Washington, D.C. about Arizona's needs, and they can expect me to work in tandem, not in competition, with my colleagues from other states to solve this problem. And, be, and to the origin of that issue, what more can you do to send the message in this country about the need to de-escalate our reliance on fossil fuels. Yeah. You know, Joe, this is something I've been talking about a lot in Washington. In fact, I expressed my surprise this summer when some of my colleagues put together a historic climate package mm -hmm. and didn't include any water funding or even acknowledgement of the drought crisis we face. The reality is, is that in order to have a sustainable future, we have to work together. That means relying on older types of fuels like liquid natural gas or uh, fossil fuels, but also transitioning to newer types of fuels like green and clean energy. And of course, in Arizona, we rely on hydropower as well, which is generated from water. So all of these issues work together. And the reality is we can't solve this challenge unless we do it together, not fighting. But what is your position on the connection between fossil fuels and climate change? 
Well, I think everyone knows that there is an absolute connection. The reality is that we don't have the ability to power our country's needs solely on green energy right now. So we need a transition. I tell folks that I believe in an all of the above energy strategy. Let's be smart about the fuel we have now and let's build the energy future we want for tomorrow. Have you talked to Chuck Schumer about uh, whether you will keep committee assignments now moving forward now that you're an independent? You know, this morning when I announced I changed my registration to independent, I did ask the majority leader to keep my committees because they're so important for Arizona's voice. I will be keeping those committees and I look forward to continuing my service working across the aisle with anyone to get stuff done for Arizona. Uh, my last Sarah, question. Let's go yeah. with Sarah. Okay. Democrats were so happy to get that slim 51 seat majority. Some of your supporters are now taking to Twitter saying that they feel betrayed by your decision to declare as an independent. What are your comments on that? You know, when I ran for Senate in 2018, I promised Arizonans that I'd be an independent voice for our state. That's exactly what I've done over these last four years. And as I always say, the proof is in the pudding. We've been able to achieve historic victories for Arizona that have made a difference in the lives of the people of the state. I'm incredibly proud of that work. I was very proud and happy to see my colleague and friend Mark Kelly reelected, and I couldn't be more delighted to have Raphael Warnock return to the United States Senate. They're both incredible partners in the bipartisan work we're doing. My stand today is about joining the many Americans and lots of Arizonans, in fact the majority of registered voters, who don't believe that any political party fits them perfectly. But Arizonans can expect me to go back to work and do what I've always done which is put my head down and deliver results for our community. Gotcha. You, according to your track record, you sided with Biden 90% of the time, whereas you sided with Trump around 50% of the time. Kelly sided with Trump only 20% of the time. You mentioned that your citing, whether you vote, will not change now that you're an independent. But if you still side with Democrats a seemingly majority of the time, what's that rationale there? Well, it's interesting that you pose it that way because that's not at all how I think. And I don't think that's how Arizonans think. When an issue is presented in the United States Senate, the first thing I do is try to figure out, can I help solve this challenge? What can I do to be a part of the solution? And as I've demonstrated over the past several years, I've been extraordinarily effective at doing so, whether it's the infrastructure bill, historic gun violence prevention, just recently the Marriage Protection Act, and the work that I've done on climate change. I'm willing to work with anyone to get things done. And so I don't think about issues as being Democrat or Republican. And I don't think Arizonans do either. So I'm not really paying much attention to people's lists or how they rank things. What I'm really focused on is how I can deliver results for Arizonans. Last question. Last question. So, so if this immigration reform gets passed or goes, you know, uh, gets uh, forward, what will happen to Title 42 after one year? Well, the proposal that Senator Tillis and I have proposed would allow Title 42 to extend for one year while the administration stands up the reforms to asylum and make some changes to the process so we can secure the border and begin a process of legalization for DREAMers. After that period, it would go away, um, and it would go away because we've changed the process of how individuals come into this country, where we can determine who wants to come to this country for good, provide a process for them to come in, and most importantly, keep out those who want to smuggle drugs or dangerous gangs into our country. Pablo and Senator, if it's okay, one last question. We have a reporter working on a story about the danger of rhetoric we're seeing in our civil discourse today. DHS put out a warning related to all kinds of demographics who are at risk. Uh, what do you observe as to the level of our rhetoric and the tone it's been taking in the last couple of years in politics? Joe, I think that question is incredibly important, and it speaks to why I think it's important for me to stand proud as an independent and say that I will not be a part of what I consider to be an escalating tit for tat, the angry rhetoric, the desire to get one over on the other party, the desire to punish each other. Everyone knows I don't function like that, and I think that good people who have different opinions can get along and work together. I've demonstrated that over the course of my career and it's returned real results for Arizona. So folks have heard me say this time and time again, we should lower the temperature. We should remove the partisanship. We should try to solve our country's problems with unity, not with division. So I call on all individuals, regardless of their political affiliation, to seek to find understanding and caring for each other, rather than to escalate political rhetoric, to engage in this name calling, which is leading to some dangerous behavior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Senator Sinema, they're shaking up the Senate there, leaving the Democratic Party going.
uh, to independent right there. And uh, that will be much talked about over the weekend there on political shows as well. And I uh, wanted to bring that live news conference right here to you. And you didn't just see a sound bite, but you saw the whole event there from uh, the media. They're asking the questions of the day to Senator Sinema. We are going to slide away for a quick two minute break. Stay right here with us. More to come on Live Now from Fox. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Live now from Fox, there were some tense moments uh, this morning in Alabama as deputies with the Tuscaloosa Sheriff's Office spent this morning searching for an inmate who's, who escaped the county jail, now back in custody. Let's listen right here on Live Now from Fox, how that search went. When they're on the phone, y'all sound a lot. <laughs> right, I missed that point. His brother. Alerts <laughs> uh, notified other law enforcement agencies um, especially Tuscaloosa Police Department and Northport Police Department. Um, the subject was captured within a very short period of time over in the Northport area of Tuscaloosa County. Um, a couple of TPD officers were actually apprehended the suspect and uh, we've got him back in the facility now. So I want to I want to say how much I appreciate our officers and our quick response and uh, especially the other law enforcement officers, uh, Northport and Tuscaloosa, uh, for their efforts in, in capturing this so suspect. So more or less the trustee status. Right? Yeah, some people's clients say trustee. We say, now we say inmate worker, same okay. same basic thing. And what was this job again? He, oh, was, a was, he was a kitchen worker. Okay. And y'all can imagine, you know, we have supplies come in and we use inmate labor, you know, in the facility to reduce costs. And, uh, and part of this process was they were moving some uh, supplies in and he was able to walk away in the process of that but he was an inmate worker literally just walked away basically that's what it amounted to uh, Ron you know anytime there's an escaped inmate you never know how these things are going to go down so you guys flood the streets with deputies and officers canines looking for this individual um, why is that important to, to go hard like that because anything can happen you're in a downtown area there's store owners there's shops there's people just how concerning was this for you? Yeah, we take we take these situations very very serious. You don't know what's going on in that that, that inmate's mind at that particular time, uh, you know, or in, in his life and what made him react and do this. You wouldn't think normally that an inmate worker would walk off and then face charges like this, 
from that, you know, and so you don't know what you're going to run into. So whenever there's a, whether it's an inmate walking off or any kind of escape whatsoever, we're going to take it to the utmost degree. That's why you're going to see eyeballs, alerts go out. That's why you're going to see helicopters, drones. You saw canines, the dogs out. That's how we're going to do it every time because we never know what may occur and we're going to try our best to make sure that we get that person back in the jail where they belong as soon as possible. What was he charged with at the time? Uh, what was he serving? I think he was in on a theft and a burglary three, I believe is what the charge actually was. Okay, uh, and I'm getting a little bit picky. Had he already been convicted or just charged? With I him? think he was just charged. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not positive. I have to check about that. But he will be getting other charges coming also, uh, in conjunction with the escape and some other possible charges uh, that Northport uh, Police Department will be working on because it would be occurring in their jurisdiction. Step us through what happened. Where he was out on the unloading the truck. Kind of take us through what happened. If you're familiar with the jail, which y'all are, y'all know where the where the uh, where the uh, kitchen door is there by the Sally Port area there, and uh, when supplies are brought in, uh, you know they're brought in in mass boxes, and those things are moved in and out, and uh, and uh, typically, you know, we'll use the inmate workers. A lot of times in situations like that, we're going to use everybody, and you know, all the inmate workers, whether it be the the car wash inmate worker or the kitchen worker or the person that cuts the grass, you know, so uh, so inmates will go and be assisted uh, and that's what transpired in the process of that happening uh, that occurred. Because, you know, the uh, jail is a huge operation and there's a lot of logistics involved in it. You know, you can imagine uh, whether, you know, just taking the trash out is a you know is a pretty big operation when you're dealing with something where you got 700 inmates and that amount of capacity going on. Sheriff, I think this is a fair question. Did somebody drop the ball on this as far as just watching them? Is there any sort of accountability? Yeah, issue here? Uh, the, we will we will be investigating this and to and to determine what happened. Uh, there's no doubt that somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. Okay. I don't know all the details yet, but we'll we'll research it and investigate it and determine, and we'll take the proper action if somebody has done something wrong or if there's some type of uh, mechanical issue or something may have been involved. I'm not sure. We don't know how have all the details of that. We'll do a thorough investigation, and if it is, we will take the appropriate action for that. Obviously, you had a lot of concern, folks, in down on Main Street. Yes. We talk about City Cafe or the other little shops around their billies. School of, kids. Right. Kids Most getting ready for school. Yeah. Morning traffic. What's your, what's your, uh, what do you want to say to the residents? You captured the guy, but there was no danger to downtown. Was it just, people were concerned. Well, yeah, it's, uh, first off, I want to tell them how much I appreciate them working with us. And, you know, we get information from the public that leads to us capturing individuals like this and, and any other crime. So uh, that's what I would say, first off, is how much I appreciate uh, the public helping us. Uh, no doubt that helps lead us to the fast capture of this suspect right here. So that, and of course, we uh, the, and and to let them know that yes, it may be alarming, but that we're going to take it to the top degree every time because we're going to do everything we possibly can do to make sure that we keep the citizens here in Tuscaloosa as safe as possible. Sheriff, can you confirm uh, that he was found? either under a house or somebody's couch. Okay, you... under, uh, supposedly he was located in, under in, hiding a, behind a couch. That's what I was informed of at that? a residence. Uh, Northport PD is actually working that case, and I'm going to let them, I, I don't really want to comment directly on it because they'll have the particulars of that. So they'll be working on the case from, from that standpoint, and of course we'll be working, we're actually working the escape aspect of it. So he actually broke into a home. Yes, that's my understanding that he actually broke into another residence or got into another residence and then, uh, and of course, that's what transpired from us getting information from the citizens out here that helped lead to this. On what are you that you guys got him in custody and why is that important? Oh, it's incredibly important. You know, our, you know, our, that's our job. Our job is to keep those inmates locked up and, and, and our people do a, a great job of that. You know, unfortunately, you're going, sometimes you're going to have situations like this and uh, the nature of how 
um, whether it's a jail or a prison, you know, you're going to have inmate workers and sometimes they're going to have access uh, to this capability at some points. And um, so we try to do everything that we can do to prevent it. But in the case like this where we don't could, could not prevent it at that particular moment, we're going to do everything possible to make sure we get them back in custody as soon as possible. At the house that he broke into, he did not know that person, right? Like I said, I'm really Norport's going to have to answer that, honestly, okay? Because they'll have the particulars of they're actually doing the investigation on Getting that. Getting back to the escape, when he walked away, um, was he surrounded by a fence, I guess, or was it sort of in the wide open where he unloaded stuff? Uh, if you you know, are you familiar with the jail? Well, if you know right there where the Sally Port is, right right next to the Sally Port is where the the door to the the kitchen is and basically it's where a truck can back in and you can start unloading supplies there so that's kind of how that works and, uh, and perhaps it's too early for you to say at this point too early in the investigation but any evidence so far that this was some sort of inside job in other mm -hmm. words inside job no apparently what i saw it's not that's not going to be the case it was just a uh you know unfortunately this is like most crimes it's, it's usually a crime of opportunity and apparently this just happened. He happened to see this moment. You know, we have had these things occur in the past before in my 34 years where, you know, you're taking, the inmates are taking garbage out and then one of them takes off running, you know. So you will have, we have had situations like this in the past, um, but we try to do everything we can do to try to prevent this from happening. Once a year, how often does this happen with you? Uh, probably, uh, I mean, it, it varies from time to time, but I would say usually probably in my career, probably once every, um, you know, few years or so, you know. The best story, I'll tell you all one, not per, per se to put on the air, but when this was the jail here, okay, we had our, what we classified as the gas man that worked down right downstairs, you know, where these steps are here. There was a sally port, okay. He get some news from his girlfriend or something, whatever. So he decides he's going to leave. So he got in a patrol car and drove. We had a patrol car chasing a patrol car all over downtown Tuscaloosa. Now, this is back in the 80s, late 80s. You see what I'm saying? But uh, so you've had situations like that, you know, that's happened. Uh, none of it is acceptable. So talk about this guy's a trustee, you know, on a, the best job he could have as an inmate and decides to walk off, just how that, that's going to be compounded into more charges, how kind of dumb that was. Yes, uh, you know, typically uh, our inmate workers that we have are going to have very minimal charges. I say minimal in the big picture of everything. Um, so they may or may not even probably be going down to prison. They're probably going to get time served in the county jail or, you know, things along the, that avenue. Um, but, like in this particular case, he's going to pick up additional charges that can actually end up to doing way more time or than he would have probably ever imagined or even, even been close to on the original charges. Any idea uh, if he said anything to your officers or TBD uh, when he was arrested? Did he say, okay, you got me? Did he say anything that you don't know want? No, I know when he, uh, not anything. Of, of substance when he came in the jail. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he was not very happy from my understanding when he got back brought into the jail. So, but that's caught it. Caught him. TPD caught him? TPD officers, we had our guys over there and TPD and I think Northport was getting information and I think we were tracking him with the dogs and I think somebody had saw him in a house and TPD officers, so I really want to give them a lot of credit and tell say how much I appreciate their help and Northport Police Department and, you know, we're blessed here in Tuscaloosa County because all of us work extremely well together. And, I mean, this was just an example of this. Hey, this happens. All these entities are coming together. They're all working together, and it leads to the capture of this guy in less than two hours. How many officers would you say were on the scene? You know, I'm betting all together, I'm guessing you probably had probably close to 50 officers combined. You know, because you've got unmarked units, you've got the TPD officers, you've got Northport, our officers, you've got our investigators coming in, you've got a lot of people responding. And I'm assuming his trustee uh, status has been. Police Department and Northport Police Department. Uh,
It was a wild morning there in Tuscaloosa as they were able to find that inmate there hiding behind a couch and now back into custody and safe to say that uh, this uh, individual will not be able to have the same s sort of perks uh, that uh, they had earlier this week. You're watching live now from Fox, everyone. We are going to take another quick two-minute break. Stay right here with us. More to come on live now. The news moves fast, and so do you, so take the news with you. You can scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 News app now. Inside the app, hit the Watch Live button to stream Fox 5 News wherever you are. Get alerts for the biggest stories and the latest news headlines, weather coverage, sports breakdowns, even iTeam investigations. So what are you waiting for? Scan the code now and take the news with you. Download the Fox 5 News app now. Get the power of the Fox 5 Storm Team in the palm of your hand. Scan the code right here to download the Fox 5 Storm Team app. Inside the app, you'll find everything you need to plan your day and keep your family safe. Set your location to get instant notifications for weather near you and even get life-saving alerts when severe weather threatens. From your hourly forecast to a full 10-day breakdown, it is all at your fingertips. Scan the code now and take the Fox 5 Storm Team with you. Welcome back, everyone, here to Live Now from Fox, taking you out to Kentucky. The governor speaking right now. Let's listen to this here on Live Now from Fox. Everyone talking about the uh, flooding that was really detrimental earlier this year in eastern Kentucky. Let's listen right here on Live Now from Fox. Lost everything. Deserve a good Christmas, just like those kids got in western Kentucky. You can find additional information at firstlady.ky.gov slash toy drive. And folks, the deadline's coming up. December 14th is the deadline to make donations at most sites or to mail donations to Jenny Wiley State Park. I wanna thank everybody who's out there. Let's really push this in the coming days. Uh, we, we wanna make sure that all these kids um, have a day that they can uh, smile and have uh, maybe even the, the most special Christmas uh, that we could provide. Today, I'm also announcing another $830,000 in awards from the Eastern Kentucky Safe Fund and more than $1.4 million from the Western Kentucky Safe Fund. This week, more than $830,000 from the Eastern Kentucky Safe Fund was approved for the Floyd County Fiscal Court to support their local match for FEMA uh, projects. $1.2 million is going to the city of Mayfield uh, for non-eligible FEMA uh, debris removal more than 205,000 to the Marshall County Fiscal Court, and 50,000 uh, of that 155,000 for a local match for FEMA, 50,000 for strained liquidity. Eastern Kentucky's now received $15 million in safe fund payments. There'll be a lot more, but they've got to basically get the bill and then send it to us. And Western Kentucky's received over 43 million. All right, this next piece is pretty fun. Um, when we launched our cleaner water program, we knew it was gonna be uh, special. When you can provide drinking water, uh, reliable drinking water uh, to people for the very first time, I just couldn't even imagine what it must mean to turn on the tap and that water comes out. The very first project we announced was in Morton's Gap. 
a town probably about the size of Dawson, maybe a little smaller in the same county, in Hopkins County. And in that city, right outside the limits, um, you know, was a lady who had lived in a place for about 60 years, had never had clean drinking water, and she'd let everybody know about it for the last 10 years. She had pushed and she had pushed. So today, we wanted to make sure you could hear directly from some of the first people through this program, a bipartisan agreement with the General Assembly, um, what it truly means and, and how important it is to families. So you're gonna hear from Ruth Baglin and June Vandiver, and um, let's let you hear it in their words. All right, the governor there um, doing this address on a toy drive as well as some aid for flooding victims and uh, delivering uh, clean uh, water to rural areas in Kentucky, everyone. We are going to continue on right here on Live Now from Fox, taking top feeds from across the country. We next go out to, to Florida here. This is in Polk uh, County right now, where we do have Sheriff Grady Judd giving an update on a uh, really uh, crazy story of a traffic stop that uh, had a, uh, the suspect had a lot in the truck there charges are possession of a short barreled rifle two counts of possession of a machine gun resisting arrest and altering the serial number of firearms let's listen right here on live now from fox in the vehicle we break the back window out of the pickup truck he still refuses to get out of the vehicle we immediately tased him and once the taser struck him he became more compliant we pull him out of the vehicle and arrested him. Here's what we learned. He wouldn't identify himself. He wouldn't get out of the vehicle. We saw a handgun. And when we asked him about all this, he said, well, you know, I'm kind of a sovereign. And I don't recognize state law enforcement. They have no authority over me. This was an illegal stop. Only the elected sheriff has authority, law enforcement authority. Well, he learned before the day was over that he was right. The sheriff's office does have authority, and we appropriately charged him. But he also learned the state troopers have authority as well because they charged him as well. We took him into custody. Tiffany immediately lost interest in wanting to resist any further, so she was simply arrested and taken into custody for resisting. Samuel Doolin is the older brother to one of the Doolins that was arrested as a, as a response to the January 6th event by the FBI. It's the same family. Quite frankly, when we got there, he, he showed the hands, but he was not getting out of the truck. We had no right to take him out of the truck because the State Highway Patrol had no right to stop him, no right to arrest him or detain him. Well, he learned differently. So at the end of the day, he's in jail, charged with a lot of different charges. He posted bond and was just about to get out of jail. However, my detectives went and added another charge that you may not be aware of, of carrying a concealed firearm, because the way he was carrying these firearms was illegal. During our investigation, we learned not only was he carrying firearms, but he had altered the handgun, the Glock. And he'd also altered the AK or the AR-15 so that they were fully automatic. That's another violation of law. So he's picked up several felony charges. It's interesting. He went from no arrest to several very significant arrests with altering guns to be fully automatic. Now he says this is what he told us, that he was an army ranger and he was just released from the military because he wouldn't take a COVID shot. I don't know if that's valid or not, but I know that's what he told our detectives and deputies. So this is one more example of the Florida Highway Patrol and the Sheriff's Office working together to ensure the safety and security of the community. He had the ability to be very violent and we just thank God that he didn't pull that gun and start shooting a fully automatic firearm at the troopers before we got there or at us either. But he's in jail, the community's safe, he's facing a lot of serious charges, 
because of the relationship with his younger brother and him being under federal charges, we've also notified the FBI. So in the event they want to tack on any federal charges as well, that's their decision. We won't, we won't make that decision. We can't make that decision. However, he says he has sovereign tendencies, and today he has jailhouse tendencies. You know what I'm saying? So that's our Christmas present to him, early present. When you don't lie, obey the law, we're going to lock you up. Merry Christmas. Sheriff, can you speak to how dangerous it is to convert guns to fully automatic? Well, first and foremost, it's against the law. It makes it a felony. And in addition to that, a fully automatic firearm can uh, malfunction. Uh, and the reason they can malfunction is because if you look at the way these were altered, and you'll see that. There's several ways to alter firearms, and obviously I'm not going to discuss all of them with you. But one is to buy a piece of equipment and put in it. The other is to alter the existing equipment, and that appears to be what he did on this case. So even if you're not violating any other law, when you alter it, you're violating the law, plus you're putting yourself at risk, even if you're altering it just for the sport of shooting an automatic firearm, it's, it's dangerous. Do you think there's a connection between him, sounds like questioning authority during this incident, and what his family is accused of doing on January 6th? I, I have no idea about that. I do know he said he was sovereign and that he did not have to obey the law. Newsflash, you do. And the sovereigns that don't pay attention to the law get to learn about it the hard way. Interestingly enough, even though he doesn't have to obey the law from the state troopers, he had a copy of the statute dealing with farm vehicles in his car. And he was using that as the evidence that this is a farm vehicle. No, it's not. It's a registered pickup truck without a tag, and you can't operate that on the roadway. Had he just capitulated to the stop, the trooper would have written him a citation and away he would have gone, more than likely. But the deeper they got into it and noticed the, fire, the concealed firearms and his resistance, it ele elevated very quickly. We're fortunate that he did not aggressively try to hurt the trooper or any of our deputies. And because he didn't, we didn't hurt him. Sure, do you believe that he may be in possession of other automatic firearms on his property or something? I mean, have you guys searched that? Or, or? We, we have to limit the arrest to the immediate vicinity. We don't have any information or any reason at this point in time to execute a search warrant on his property. So we don't know what else he may or may not have. What we do know is he picked up several felony criminal charges. What we know is he was not a felon before. He wasn't a, a, or he didn't have any criminal record before. So he managed to go from ostensibly a law-abiding citizen to picking up a lot of serious felony charges that he's now facing over simply not having a tag on his truck. Now, come on, man. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out in the state of Florida, when everybody else has got a tag on their car, you got to have one too. And if you don't, then we're going to cite you and take the appropriate action. And as a result, he chose to do it the hard way. We can do it the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The state of Florida has determined you have to have a tag to operate your vehicle on public property. He ignored the law. He went to jail. Any indication, sorry, I'm sorry, Jim. Good. Any indication on how he planned to use the weapons against law enforcement? Because clearly he doesn't have any respect or doesn't uh, you know, embrace the authority of law enforcement or at a school or any place else. No, actually he told the trooper, when the trooper said, why do you have these firearms? He said, well, I have it to protect myself from law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So he had those firearms, according to him, to protect himself from law enforcement. He did not pull the weapon out. 
He clearly showed his hands to us. But we find that all of that suspicious. If, in fact, he was an Army Ranger, my experience is that Army Rangers are top-of-the-line people and wonderful people and heroes. And all of a sudden he goes from Ranger, if that's accurate, to making a fully automatic weapon out of one that's not to protect himself from law enforcement. What you see here is a guy that's got a screw loose, but we tightened it up for him. Does it concern you, Sheriff, considering his family's history with January 6th and all, that he had those type of weapons, that he made those type of statements? I mean, does that draw even more concern to you? Well, it just follows the sovereign thought process, and he already admitted that to us. But anyone who has a firearm and displaces it let me say that again. Anybody who has a firearm displays it, possesses it, and threatens that it's here to protect them from law enforcement, that's the person we need to be concerned with. Now, having said that, we saw the polar opposite while we were there in that he completely showed us his hands the whole time and never offered any overt motions to grab the gun. So it's important to point out that he cooperated in the sense that he showed us his hands, but he wasn't getting out of the car. He was not agreeing to the traffic stop. And I guess he thought at some point in time we'd go, okay, it seems like you know the law. Let us go leave you alone. That's not how it works. You know, so he had to learn the hard way, but you know, there are many of us that are going to have different kinds of Christmas presents this year. His Christmas present from us is felony charges. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Can you give me a quick primer on automatic weapons? Did he make the Glock and the AK-47 into an automatic or is Both the handgun and the rifle. And the rifle was cut, the barrel was cut off, so it was illegal because it was too short. So he had a short barrel rifle that he had transferred over to a fully automatic firearm and the same thing with his handgun and we have some pictures of ammunition drums that were fully loaded that he had for those firearms with him with his relatives connected to january 6th we're hearing that his cousin is jonathan pollock who's still on some of you are going to be seeing a quick two-minute break here, a final break of the hour on Live Now from Fox. Whether or not Jonathan Pollock is his cousin or not, I, I mean, I don't know if he is, he is. I, I'm not